Hey, hello there, good morning. Oh, I'm bright today, so I've just seen this. <laughs> I look like the sun, and it is shining today, isn't it? Wow, sorry. Yes, yeah, so just your TV sets. Uh, I am with the wonderful Adam Wilcock today. Bex has taken a few days off, uh, and I love working with Adam because Adam is a truly talented garden designer. Him and his partner John have won several gold medals at Chelsea. Never, I'm always so impressed with that, Adam. Uh, well, I always love working with you as well, Sean. You're brilliant. You're a fantastic well, gardener as well. Thank you very much. You know, for yeah, we're, we're passionate gardeners, we very are. passionate gardeners. And actually, you don't talk about your gold medals very often, but you do talk about gardening because you are a hands-on gardener as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I have, you know, along with partner John, won four gold medals at the Chelsea Flower Show and some yeah. silver medals and some silver gilt medals. And, yeah, we've done other shows as yeah. well. And, yeah, it's been good. It's been a blast. But uh, but you just love plants, don't I, you? Yeah, yeah, I just live for plants, live for gardening. Well, today we've got three hours of amazing plants. And I do apologise. I know there were problems ordering yesterday. It's the first time I've ever known that, actually, at you garden. But it was fixed last night. So if you couldn't place orders easily yesterday, you can place your orders today. You can use all your normal accounts, all your discounts, everything like that. But just to remind everybody, if you are new to the show, a few things you need to know. First of all, you get free postage if you spend over £40. And actually, this time of year, you, know, you probably need some compost and things like that. So try and get your order to over £40. We'll deliver it for free. If it's under £40, then postage is £6.99 an order. So that's for the entire order. Now, we've also got a free gift, haven't we, Adam? We have got a free gift, Sean. And... This is fantastic because this is a super, super tough bag, which we kind of... Do you want to do tug of war again? Yeah, quickly? come on. Took a bag. But these so, are so the, tough. These, I mean, they these, are that. The, the, oh, I'm one leg here. Um, so, so basically, whatever you put in that bag, it's not going to give way. So, you know, if you're doing a big sort of... Oh, I'm giving away my habits now, but, you know, you go to the supermarket and you're buying half a, do half a bo um, dozen bottles of wine, not going to fall out to the bottom last of this year, bag. obviously. Um, but, it's true. Um, recycling, but great for garden weeding. But it's actually a grow bag as well, so you can grow all sorts in here, can't you? Oh, goodness me. Uh, potatoes, raspberries, fruit trees. And I tell you what, if you're moving or thinking of moving, these are great bags for transplanting plants in as well. Yeah. So you, know, you, you can lift them, pop them in now, put a bit of soil around them, let them root in a bit, and then just lead them to one side. And then when you're ready to go, take the bag and the plant and... Job done. Great idea. Great idea. Right, we better crack on that. Just a few other things very quickly. Um, obviously, you do need to use the code to get your free gift and all the promotions. YGTV1524. Very important. That'll give you your, you know, your, your free gift, but it'll also give you things like there's a buy one, get two free, extra discounts. But just always use the offer code to get things like the buy one, get one free and every other promotion that is available. And Adam and I, we would love to hear from you, wouldn't we, Adam? Of course pictures. we would. Love your pictures. Honestly, your pictures yeah. are brilliant because um, it, it sort of encourages us and, it, and it's good to know you're getting fantastic results. Yeah, and Adam will be getting ideas for his next uh, award-winning garden with Chelsea. Yeah. Right, let's should we go this side. Yeah, got, go got, for it. We've got so many amazing plants. But we are going to start off with a top seller from last week and it is the Euphorbia Black Pearl. And I was out in my garden before I came to you garden this morning and my euphorbias are really looking good. They're beginning to come into bud and flower. It is a great, great time of year for euphorbias. But actually, these look good pretty much all year round, don't they? Adam? Yeah, because they're evergreen, Sean. So yeah. even when the flowers have gone, you've got the evergreen foliage and you've even got colour in the stems. I mean, look at this. Yeah, this, they're sort of like they've got orangey red, red aren't yeah, they? Yeah, orangey red stems that then go into the green. And then, goodness me, these flowers on the top that are sort of partially made up of bracts with the true flower in, in the middle of the bract up the top there. But yeah, euphorbias are brilliant plants and they're so tough, they're so hardy. They grow in really dry soils, poor soils, sandy, yeah. stony soils, uh, exposed positions uh yeah, i've seen them grow in shade full sun um and they that, demand I mean, nothing from you no you, you just plant them and leave them I, and they look great i, I think they look great on mass but they look great in as individual uh, plants as well you can only buy one for 9.99 but for an extra two pounds you, you can have two and i actually i was looking at my euphorbia in my garden and i have to say adam they're nice but this is a lot more dramatic isn't it yeah i mean you've got the, the drama on this of you know that I mean, you can see why they call it black pearl yeah. because you, know, you, you look at the eye in the middle there I mean, that is so stunning, that contrast of that black with that acid kind of green and then almost Amazing. like going down to very, very kind of pale sort of yellow tints. And yeah, I mean, look, that's just that's just incredible. I mean, you, 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 it's almost difficult to take in what you're looking at. It's so unusual and you and you can barely kind of make out the difference between the leaves and the flowers. It really just is a, a plant that kind of absorbs your attention and you just want to keep looking at it because it's interesting. And I think if with with 
with all gardens, but particularly smaller gardens, which most people have nowadays, you want plants to look as as good as they can for most of the year, don't you? Yeah, and that, that one does. It really does. There's no room in a small space, is there, for uh, you know plants that aren't performing properly? No. Yeah, everyone's no. got to be a star. Everyone kind of needs yeah. to earn its place, yeah. doesn't it? And uh, and goodness me, th this will earn its place wherever you plant it. And this could be in a pot even if you want to grow this in a pot. That's fine. As I always say, if you're three floors up and just got a balcony, you can grow this. Uh, if you've got a gravel garden, a scree garden, um, you know, if you've got like some an area at the front of your house where you've put down to gravel and you're thinking, oh, it's looking a little bit boring and I don't know what to do, but it's really hot and dry and windy, just put euphorbias in. They'll love it. They'll thrive yeah. and they'll just do their thing and that's it. All you've got to do is cut the deadheads off when they're finished flowering. Just wear some gloves so you don't get the sap on you. But honestly, amazing. Brilliant. Right. We better move on because we, we've got so much to get through. And the petunias are coming up next. Uh, do you know what? Some of you have already placed your orders for these this morning. Um, I know, say we had problems yesterday, all fixed now. I didn't actually place an order last night because I was running my garden club and couldn't place an order during the day, so I've got a big list today. But look at these. I mean, these are absolutely the most breathtaking petunias you could ever, ever imagine. And they called the petunia, hang on, I'll start that one again, petunia, saphinia, burgundy yellow picotase. It's not easy to say. But Adam, I mean, as petunias go, I don't think it gets more beautiful than those, do you? Nor do I. And again, I'll be really upfront with you because I was, was saying, um, to Craig, who helps us set the shows up before, that in my mind, ideally, um, I, I've not been a, a big fan of yellow and red as, really? as, as a mixture. Really? But, yeah, but when I saw these, it was like, whoa, th this, this just connected with my brain straight away. We walked into the room yesterday, into the potting shed, the picture card was standing up, and, and out of all the kind of plants that we had pictures of, I just thought yeah. that is stunning and it is so different, so unusual. Elegant is, is, is what yeah. it says to me. It's really, really elegant because sometimes you can put colours like that together and they can be vulgar, they can be brash, they can be you know, not that pleasing to the yeah, eye. Yeah, I, I hear but what you're saying, Adam. There's just something about this petunia that you just look at it and you think, wow. I think maybe it's the, the tone of yellow because it's, like, it's not a really bright yellow, it's like a buttery yellow mm. and there's not too much of it, it's just around the edge. Well, it's, it's just that perfect balance yeah. isn't it because if it was half and half it, it, it kind of jar a bit wouldn't it but it's so it's just enough to kind of highlight the edge of the flower and, and not kind of compete with the red of the central of the flower but just imagine Sean midsummer late summer you've got these training down 30 40 50 centimeters and they will be one of those hanging baskets that when friends people come round, they will say yeah. what are they where did you get them from um, well I'm gonna just do my whole baskets in these I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna double up you get two lots for 14.90 i'm probably going to do two big baskets six in each adam but you were suggesting yesterday that you could actually throw in a little bit of purple as well potentially I, I, yeah if you want to be a bit more random i mean it, say yeah. if you went for six of those um in a sort of an 18 inch hanging basket then i would be tempted to be a bit of a rogue and put three purple ones in and so, so it's yeah. not too much purple but just that little bit of purple popping in between as well but of course it's completely and utterly up to you it's your garden it's your space you do whatever floats yeah. your boat you know that at the end of the day um i think they're going to be really popular today We've already had orders go through two lots for 14 at 98 401 555 at uh, just nine pounds and 99 pence our bex she should be resting on a holiday she's busy watching us <laughs> bex hi bex yeah she should be resting although she might be back by now actually she might be back today but hi bex bex is back on uh, next week i believe uh, yeah. no sunday sunday yeah she's back sunday Yes, and you've got the day off on Sunday, haven't you? I have, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, I'm away this weekend. <laughs> I need, I need to get a better diary, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, so it'd be you. It, it, it's me and Bex here on Sunday. It is. It's Bex and I here on Sunday. Uh, and Adam's got the day off. But thank you, Bex, and I hope you've had a lovely time. Um, I know she's in the Peak District, so yes. Yeah, gorgeous part and of the, the world. Sun that hopefully is. shining there today, if you're still there. Right, going to move on to the most breathtaking geraniums next. And these are called Geranium Storm Cloud. And I, it's only the last couple of years, Adam, that I've really got into my perennial geraniums, but I think they're amazing in terms of the value that they give to an, a garden. Yeah. Because they do flower for months and they're so low maintenance, aren't they? They are, and there's so, so many varieties now. And we're, yeah. th it's kind of going to be a bit of a theme running through today's show because you know, a lot of the plants you see, we could be talking about contrast between flower and foliage and, and even you know, between different 
different parts of foliage. And this is, again, oh. one of those plants. You've got those incredible leaves, those deeply kind of edged, notched, serrated leaves, which are in their own right are fascinating. Uh, you know, and some have got that purpley color, some of that chocolate color. And even if I just saw a, a clump of foliage like this, it would be like, wow, that's gorgeous foliage. I love it. That, that's just so different, so unusual. But then to top it all, oh my goodness me, I mean, look, look at this. I know, that the, is an amazing color, isn't that, it? That's just, God. that's crimson, isn't it? I mean, it's, 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 it's a spectacular color. And above that foliage, this just looks magnificent. It's, it's so unusual, so different, so interesting. But as you say, Sean, geraniums, hardy geraniums, you know, we're not talking about the bedding geraniums, but hardy geraniums are just so, so easy. Again, when I think back over the years about all the different customer gardens that I've got, and I think about when we've had cold winters, when we've had bone dry hot summers, uh, when we've had the most kind of awful, dreadful weather, it's always the geraniums that always pull through, that always come yeah. through after every winter. They're survivors. And, yeah. and, and some of them die down to ground level and you think they're not gonna come back. And then the, you know, the sun gets up in the sky, the light starts to get longer and you see their little green shoots come up and every year they come back for you. Mine are just coming up now, actually. Yeah, yeah. and, and just... they're good plants for drought areas, for, for poor yeah. soils. But they're, not, they're not demanding. They're really very undemanding plants at the end of the day. But for me, it is this particular variety that is outstanding. And you probably, you might have never seen it before on YGTV. It's here today, you get all three ready to plant right now. And I love the way that it just kind of meander, filling gaps, and are just so resilient. But this is very dramatic. Dramatic. That wonderful kind of burgundy foliage against the purpley blue is exquisite. That is, they are definitely going to be in my basket today. Well, just 100%. imagine, some, you know, I'd go for two or three of those. You know, you almost, three, you know, I, you do yeah, no, I mean, two or three, lots oh, of three. See? Oh, so, okay. yeah, so I'd, you know, if I had the space, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have three lots of three. So really go for some kind of really big drama with those. But yeah. uh, let us know look, if, you, if you're ordering those, if it's in your basket, let, let us know where are they going, how many are you getting. What do you love about them? We would love to hear from you today. But yeah, I fall in love with those 100%. And I've, got, I've got the Roseanne. Most of my geraniums are geranium Roseanne, which is gorgeous. But I think I'm going to mix this in with them as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Roseanne is slightly more uh, vigorous. And I mean, yeah, it it's goes, a bit more, yeah, yeah, it goes yeah, mad. Yeah. That really this takes, is a so, bit more compact. Yeah, this is, this is clump forming, more contained. So this, you know, don't worry about this one sprawling all over yeah. everything. This keeps its own little area to itself. It's so right, Roseanne does tend to just kind of like get it. But not in a bad way. I've seen that Roseanne actually climb up into shrubs and um, yeah, 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 about get four or five foot off the ground. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll bring it to you one um, day, Roseanne. It's a right. brilliant one for a big space. I think we're going to have a really busy show, three of those. 1797 is the discount club price as well. Right, we're going to move on to uh, another really popular item, and it's our Danthus Pinks. Again, orders already getting through this. A lot of people couldn't place their orders yesterday, so lots of you making up for that today. And this is, <laughs> I like the name of this, this is the Pleasure Collection. Okay. And I know. So sounds so slightly Sanders, doesn't yeah, it, really? But... I was going to say, it sounds, <laughs> sounds slightly naughty. Um, but these are an absolute classic. I mean, I used to call these pinks. Yeah, well, that's what we call them now. Yeah. yeah, we call them pinks. Yeah, why not? They are pinks. But um, I think pinks is misleading because you think they're all pink, but actually you've got six wonderful varieties in it. So lots of different colours. Yeah, well, contrast in colour, Sean, which is great. Uh, contrast in sort of flower shape a little bit as well. Um, some of them are more solid colours. Some of them are sort of more of a mixed colour. All of them will have the most stunning scent and fragrance, like spicy kind of fragrances from these. And like so many of the plants we bring you, these are just so easy to look after. They only get to about six, seven inches tall so they're very compact they eventually sort of form like little cushions or little sort of mounds of, of sort of silvery grey foliage that's there all the year through. It's evergreen. So even in the winter time, there's something to look at. And these are good plants for problem areas. So when I say that, for instance, have you got really poor soil? If you've got really thin, stony soil, if you've got really chalky soil, if you've got really gravelly soil, if you've got soil that's dry and exposed and you know, you've tried other things and they just kind of languish and don't really thrive, pinks, love that kind of position yeah. they, that's they grow in those kind of really poor kind of soil areas they're fabulous for rockeries for little alpine gardens for scree gardens any anywhere like that they'll do really really well and when you think about it, i mean we love our summer bedding but summer bedding you've got to replace every single year and it can be quite costly these are working out less than a pound each they will all flower this year oh definitely and they do grow quite quickly as well 
and you've got them for many years, if not decades. So the value is incredible. And I remember my nan had these uh, all down the pathway of a little bungalow, and she'd often take cuttings every year and share them with friends and family. We all ended up with loads of pinks. Yeah, yeah. You, you could take the cutting. They call them pie pins, the cuttings you take from pinks. But ultimately, my advice for these would be: if you want the best from these, and you want these to live, you know for as long as you want them to live, the, the, the ultimate place for them is full sun, full sun yeah. really well, well, drained. well drained. Yeah, real super baked kind of hot sunny area, whereas I say other things might just frazzle up in the sun. These will just say, bring it on, and they'll absolutely thrive and love it. And um, the lovely thing is you can have so many of these. You'll be able to pick some of them, put them in a little uh, little vase. I mean, they're not really tall, but they do make a lovely little display, don't they? Yeah, and you could, if you're going to visit a friend or you know, yeah. somebody who's feeling a bit down or a bit poorly, you could pick a gorgeous little bunch of these and just put a little bit ribbon round and take them as a little posy of pinks and oh, oh you old romantic but you Adam e even just the fragrance Sean yeah. just taking that little uh, you know and, and and again um we were talking about Chelsea Flower Show before um I, I did a garden um, some years back for guide dogs so I remember it was your brilliant. sensory garden yeah. wasn't it yeah so these are wonderful. really brilliant plants for people with sight problems yeah. as well so yeah and I've learned that with my mum she can hello mum by the way if she's watching but my mum she is partially sighted now um she can still manage a garden but we've had to change things slightly Mm. And as you say, now fragrances and sounds and are so important to her. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I remember your garden got a lot of coverage, didn't it, on the BBC? Yeah, we did well. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. 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 But, but I learned a lot then as well, because up to that point, I'd, I'd only ever sort of enjoyed gardens visually, because lucky enough, yeah, I can see, but yeah. so many people can't. Yeah. So all of a sudden you learn, actually, you need to think about gardens in other ways. You need to think about, as you say, sound. You need to think about fragrance. Mm. You need to think about texture and yeah. all that kind of thing. And you know, and, and these you know, bring that as well, because you've got the fragrance. And the, the, texturally, they're nice as well, because when you sort of run your hands over these They're, they've kind of got like a sort of a wiry kind of feel to them but you know pleasant sort of feel yeah. so again if for sensory uh, effect they're, they're brilliant for that and also even if you've got um partial sight as well i know for a lot of people if the colors are really bright you're so right they can still see the color they yeah. might not get to see the definition but they can see yeah. the color that's so, what i learned with my mum but they if at the back of a garden we do the hanging baskets and pots in, in things like reds mm. we even she can see she knows that and actually my mum says that her mind kind of fills in the pieces. So, you know, though yeah. she can't actually see the the, the red flowers individually. individually, she knows they're there. She can see the red and kind of her mind fills in the rest. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, well, that's, that's what the pinks will do. Yeah. They're fabulous, aren't they? They're gorgeous. And, and only £10 and £49. 12 plugs. Um, Adam, quick question. Would you put them straight in the ground or would you grow them on a bit? Uh, you know what? These are... Because they're quite strong, aren't they? Yeah, I'd say you could put these straight in the yeah. ground, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I was thinking that. I mean, normally we say grow them on, but they're actually quite strong. They're, they're really hardy, these plants. So, um, And also the sun this time of year isn't that super, super hot yet as well. So if you put them in now, they'll gradually acclimatize. Uh, yeah, put, put yeah. them straight in. They're, they're easy got enough root on them Sean to, to grow yeah. away under their own steam now uh, amazing absolutely amazing value and will give you uh, pleasure hence the name for many many years to come now when it comes to summer bedding pants I'm pretty right in saying now that the nation's favorite is the busy Lizzie it's really really soared in popularity over the past few years. And I must admit, it's one of my absolute favorites myself. And I think what I love about Busy Lizzie's is the fact that they're one of the few summer bedding plants that will actually really do well in shade. They, I mean, they really do. I mean, they do. They, they'll, they'll be great in sun, but it's amazing what little light these can cope with. Well, it's weird you just say because again, in my garden, I've got a north facing border where I have things like flocks and hostas and ferns uh, and sedges and things like that. And um, I love the hostas, but sometimes the hostas that I've got are, are so tall and the leaves arch over, but then they don't quite cover the ground completely underneath. And, and exactly I can see soil and gaps say. underneath. You hate soil. Well, yeah, not, I, you hate seeing soil. I hate seeing so, soil, yeah. yeah. So what I tend to do with busy lizzies is once I get to about the end of May uh, into June and you know, all the perennials in that border have really got to their ultimate size, if there's any gaps, I just poke busy lizzies in. And they're just brilliant for those shady, yeah. cool positions. If I put petunias or geraniums in there, they just they yeah. just give up. But. And also, where there's a gap, there's going to be weed. That's well, that's my mm. sort of like mantra because I live in the country and seeds, you know, weeds just they just pop up everywhere. So I actually use busy lizzies just to plug in those gaps. And actually, there's very little you need to do with them. 
These are tough. I mean, these are yeah. mildew resistant as well. So they've got, they've got that sort of been bred to have that mildew resistance. And actually in the trials, the Beacon variety, they came out, came out really super resilient. Yeah, they yeah. Really, they're tough. Beacons are the one. In fact, I'm, I'm growing from seed, because I was telling folks yesterday, I was going to bring my little tray of, of, of them in, but it's been such a problem growing them. I thought, I don't want to drop that tray after all the effort. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you want to kind of put yourself through the effort of growing from seed, you're welcome to try. But you it's know what? It's a lot what? of work. And, it, and there is a bit of an art to it. There is. And, and um, Busy Lizzie seeds are, are quite difficult to get to germinate. Yeah. They're not the easiest thing to germinate. Well, aren't they? they are tiny as well, They are tiny, yeah. So, you know, if you want Busy Lizzie's, but you want all the hard work and done for you, and if you want some look plants at these that as well. are what I call ridiculous, because these are ridiculous, I mean, look at them, for goodness sake. I know. They're only, they're only inch a couple of inches tall Sean and they're already in flower yeah. right now this. they're absolutely covered Look I mean the they bus. just cannot wait to get in your garden you were you would probably even though they're a good size you would probably still want to grow them on a bit because they need to get frost free even though it's really warm at the moment so you, you would probably want to grow them on a bit or because these are quite big what I'd be tempted to do is maybe make up some pots and just keep the whole pots slightly sheltered. Yeah, you, you could do that. In a yeah. greenhouse or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, anywhere like that. But as I say, yeah, definitely sure. I think that's that's a good idea just to grow them on a little, a little bit. bit. Uh, you could use a yoghurt pot, you could use a margarine carton, yeah, anything really. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, go... You don't have to spend a fortune. Spend a fortune. But just, um, just grow them on till the end of this month. And then I think once we get into May, I think we'll be fine. Yeah. But they are amazing. It's a brilliant variety. 400, 804, and 999. Oh, we just really quickly need to remind you. Do you know, I think loads of you today will go for the Petunia Sophinia Burgundy Yellow Picote. It is a stunner. I, I think I'm going I'm to double up, but I might even go for more. I'm, I'm just going to stick with Picote. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of words, isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 Your petunia, saffinia, burgundy, yellow, picotet. Uh, saffinia, though, when it, when it comes to petunias, the brand saffinia is so important. It's 30 years of breeding here. Yeah, and it's one of those brands that um, is world-renowned, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and it will be forever now. It, you know, I think sort of saffinia will be synonymous with trailing petunias. It, and and really long-trailing petunias. Long tra and disease-resistant, yeah. vigorous, healthy, yeah, just sort of fabulous, fabulous plants. Um, absolutely love those. So do you brand new for this week and if you double up it's only five pounds more and I'll be honest they are a little bit they are a little bit more expensive than than your regular petunias and you will find the bulk standard petunias in the supermarkets in summer but they won't be as well bred as this they won't perform as well and they won't be as beautiful and I also get it's really important when I do my, my hanging baskets and my pots and containers just to have a few standout plants. This is definitely standout. Isn't it? Yeah, and the thing yeah. is with us as well, you, you will get quality plants. I, I have seen, and again, you know, I'm not putting supermarkets down, but I've sometimes seen they have these Dutch trolleys outside. They're, they're all loaded right to the back. I know what you're going to say. And the ones at the back don't get bought for about four or five days. Yeah. And then you go to pull them out and they're all yellow yeah. and they're looking all, all, all kind of all stretched yeah. out and, and leggy. And, Do you know what I would think as well, Adam? There's been, I think there's been so much cost cutting in terms of staff. I mean, yeah, everywhere seems short staff, but a lot of the garden centres, they just don't seem to have the staff to look after the plants well And enough. sometimes they don't get watered, these no. things, so they're all dried out and they go a bit crispy. And I can whereas, promise you, the, 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 all the team here, their passion for gardening is incredible. Uh, today, I think there's 150 people on site, but that gets even more as we yeah. head towards summer. Right, very busy for those. Get them in your basket right now. I think they're going to be one of the top sellers today. Also, we have got our best-selling compost. In fact, it's our best-selling product here at U Garden, And we've had 2,000 orders go through for this just this uh, last week or so already 2,000 orders. Don't surprise me. Um, and again, we only get busier. So what I'm going to say is try and get your basket to over 40 pounds. And if you, if you, it's a few plants you like, maybe you just want the petunias today, get some compost, get that order to over 40 pounds and you get free delivery. But you might just want to place some separate orders for the compost because with every separate order, you do get your free gift, that fantastic heavy duty uh, grow bag as well. So that will come with every separate order. But um, let's talk about the compost. Adam, I mean, it's a great bag. It's a great bag, one free with every single order and they are amazing, seriously. 
I counted, I've got six of those, and I do use them for all sorts, including growing potatoes, tomatoes, raspberry canes, but obviously great when Adam's buying his wine as well. Um, you can get a lot of bottles in there. And you the, can. Yeah. And you get them home in one piece as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But let's talk about our best-selling product uh, here at U Garden. It is our premium professional compost. Uh, basically, it's a compost that we use on the nursery. We've actually potted up recently tens of thousands uh, of roses in this compost uh, and some of those roses are real premium roses it's like Harkness roses for example we had to look at some of those yesterday so f as a business as a nursery if there was a better compost out there to grow our plants we'd, we'd use it this is the best that we know and it is absolutely outstanding and Adam you'll have worked with many many different types of compost when you open up the bag and see and touch and smell this do you know straight away yeah the, the, I mean when you smell it first of all it, it's what you don't smell is what's important you, it, you don't smell mildew you don't smell mold no. you don't smell a musty smell it smells fresh it, sm it smells clean it smells healthy which is good because this is a freshly made compost that you know is made it's put in these plain white bags and then it's just sent straight to you. It doesn't get stacked up and left somewhere no. for months on end to kind of deteriorate and become compact. It's always fresh. And um, it's a, a hugely peat reduced compost as well. It's got um, composted wood fiber in it, wood bark in it. And what that does, three things really, it keeps the compost nice and open, so that means the roots of your young plants and seedlings can penetrate, it means the air and the oxygen can get down to the roots, and it allows the water to percolate through as well. So with those kind of uh, peat element and the composted wood fibre element, you've got a compost that's never too wet, never too dry, yeah. it's always got that perfect balance. It's got a wetting agent in it as well, and that makes it like kitchen towel, it makes the compost super absorbent, it wants to suck in the moisture. You know, sometimes with um, inferior compost you go to water them when they're dried out it's like water off a yeah, duck's back the water sits on the top doesn't soak in and then you saw the hanging basket that's dried out the water sits on the top and then goes over the side that doesn't happen I like your analogy it's like a kitchen uh, towel like it is a, yeah, yeah. And, with, and with that other compost rail. sometimes you, you have to take the hanging baskets down you have to soak them in a big uh, truck yeah. overnight to actually get the compost wet with this it want it wants to get wet it's water friendly um, there's a slow release fertilizer in, in here as well there's a little one there there's a little your green tiny Little, little green beads in there which are a slow release so you know over the course of time they gradually sort of break down and, and sort of feed the plants for up to six months and it's pH balance as well and what that means is it sounds gobbledygooky but basically what it means is that the compost is, isn't too acidic it's not too alkaline it's towards the middle so that means far far more plants will be happy growing yeah it. so great for anything from seeds all the way through to trees and everything in between one of our, where well, it's our best seller, it's our highest rated, and we would love you to get some today if you've never ordered before, because it will, I think it turns you into a better gardener overnight, and I really mean that, 100, 125 for our premium professional compost. What a great show we've got. Right, um, I have to say, there's an amazing viburnum coming up, so it just took my breath away there, but <laughs> very quickly, we have got a buy one, get two free on these wonderful uh, Torino pots. And we love these because you know, we've got we've got our summer bedding. I mean, those petunias would look amazing in here, wouldn't they? They would look good in there. And we're, also the little, um, oh, where are you? Yeah, we're gonna to come to them later. The little um, geums we've got. Yeah, they'd, they'd look great. Look great. But what I love about these type of pots is they're just so easy to plant up. They're so easy to move around. They're great on things like steps. If you've got some little steps in your garden, some walls, or just a little seating area. And if you've already got these, I mean, we've sold thousands of these uh, on the U Garden website, but if you've already got these, let us know what's in them right now. Have you, still, have you got some primroses flying right now? Have you maybe uh, got a few perennials in them? Are you looking for a bit of inspiration today? But the value is incredible, one pound 33 each day worker. Let's just show you how to do this on the website. Very easy. And by the way, keep those comments coming up. It's a real honor to have Adam with us. Uh, he's a very modest man, but he's actually, um, you know, him as part of John, to win all of those gold medals at Chelsea. I mean, he's won quite a few silver ones, but he's disappointed with that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it is amazing. So pick Adam's brains, you know. He, he, I'm pretty safe in, in, in saying that between us, we can hopefully, cover any questions yeah it, and unless, should be a good chance. I don't, yeah unless you're going to ring in from some subtropical part of the world where the plants are very different but yeah, yeah but you know a lot of those you love your exotic i'm plants, sure we can help you out uh, but let's show you how to save some money today as well so one of these on the website is 3.99 
598 for two. But remember, you are watching You Garden TV today. Great reviews on these, by the way. So put one in your basket. So at the moment, yeah, that's not as good as it could be at all. 1098 for that, we include postage. Put the off code in, YGTV1524. Suddenly you get two freebies and you get your grow bag. It's like your grow bag tidy bag for exactly the same price. And so we're saving 12.97. And again, if you want to put a second one in there, you get four free. So the more you, you order actually, the better the value is on these. And if you want to save on your postage, because let's be honest, you're still paying six nine nine postage, and that's what it is per order. I would definitely get some compost in there today. So we're going to add that to the basket, and then we need one other item. So, ooh, I think I, I've got to go for those petunia saffinias, don't you think? Oh, got yeah. to. It's a must. Sure. It is nice little five pit. They've got all sorts on our website, actually. But yeah, let's go for those. Yeah, twelve definitely. And then suddenly you'll notice, because we'll be over 40 pounds now, postage is free. And one final little tip, if you want to become a club member, there's a little, um, can see a little message there, save a further five pound 20, become a Ucarden discount club member. And actually our membership on auto renewal is five pounds a year. So we could actually join the club right now, save 520, have membership for the entire year and still be in, in pocket. That's amazing, isn't it? It does, it makes sense. And also, you told me, um, once you join, it doesn't go up, it stays the same. If you go for the auto renewal, the green one, uh, you're so right, Adam, it's five pounds a year. That gives you 10% off every plant and accessory. It gives you 5% off every outdoor living product, that's tools, equipment, gifts. You'll also get 20 pounds worth of you garden vouchers that you can use throughout the year and exclusive offers, competitions, and expert advice. The only difference between the green and the purple membership, five pounds difference, but the green one will automatically renew at the end of 12 months, but you can, of course, cancel it. And the green one, the price, as Adam's just said, will never, ever go up. So go green, don't you think, Adam? Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, Definitely go, go green. Go green. Green all round, mm -hmm. yeah. But this go green is, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just a fantastic idea. It's a brilliant idea. Now I've just walked over to this centre part of our potting shed, and the fragrance. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I'm standing I mean, here, and it's like oh. seriously. And I, I've got the worst sense of smell. It's not great at all. Um, but I can smell that from here. And because we've got the lamps and the lights and we've got oh. the warmth, it's really kind of wafting up this fragrance as well. This is magnificent. This is a viburnum. And um, oh my goodness me, yeah, you can see what they call it Eskimo because it's, you know, it's just got that incredible I kind mean, of... Adam, you must have worked with many varieties of, of viburnums. This is outstanding, yeah, isn't it? The, the, I this, mean, this is outstanding, sure. I mean, you know, this is... It looks these... more... It, it reminds me more of a hydrangea. Yeah, almost like with a kind of paniculata kind of yeah. hydrangeas. Yeah, these these four great big heads, almost like, you know, almost like a, a complete sort of ball of, of, of pure white colour. Uh, and fragrance as well. Really delicious, sweet fragrance. And you can see, look how delicate each flower looks. I mean, these are absolutely magnificent. And what I particularly like about this as well is this is a standard form of this. So, um, normally... Normally when you uh, grow these sort of viburnums, there's, they're sort of like the Carlesii types, which can make quite sort of big shrubs yeah, that will take, I, up, yeah, yeah, will take up a lot of space. Um, and they don't share very well in, in a small space with other plants. But it means now you can enjoy that kind of viburnum because it's a standard. So all the growth is going to be up at the top and then that gives you opportunity to underplant down there at the yeah. base. So you, you, you're, you're sort of doubling up the area that you can plant in because whereas before it was just this and nothing else around it for ages because you needed the space, now you can have that viburnum with plants God. right up against it. And to have something as stunning and as beautiful and as dramatic it, oh. as this, it's, it's absolutely... I'm you might Whoa. well want to go for a pair of these as well. That is just so gorgeous, isn't it, Sean? Look at that. It's amazing. The, just the drama of that, those, those huge, great big heads of, just, of white colour there. I don't um, think I've ever seen a viburnum that is quite as, as beautiful. It, it's what you call, it's voluptuous, isn't it? I oh, mean, that's a good word. It is. It's just, yeah, it's just voluptuous. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it, and you know, when, when you see our stews focused in you know, on, on yeah. the plant there, and you see the, the beauty of each individual little flower in that entire sort of flower head, it's, it, it's magnificent. It's, it, it kind of reminds me of something you might have in a wedding bouquet. It's got yeah. that kind of look to it.
And we've only got, I mean, we did look on the nursery early. In fact, Craig had put, helps put our shows together for us. He uh, had a little wander on the nursery. He said, oh, there's not many. There's about, I may say not many, there's about 150. But bear in mind, we've got such a huge mail order business. A lot of our customers just order off the website. I would definitely get that today. And I would go for two if you can. Um, it's we, super hardy as well. I mean, it's, it's a... It'd it's it's be quite get, hard to kill the birds, Yeah, yeah. They? This will get through the coldest, coldest winter. So there's, mm. there's, there's no problem uh, with that. They're, 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 once they're established, they're very drought tolerant. I've seen viburnums grow on quite heavy soil as well. Very heavy clay kind of soils. Uh, so Bex, if you're watching, because Bex has got clay yeah, soil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are a really adaptable shrub. They're, they're pretty much not fussed. I, and I've seen them grow in dappled shade and, and flower very, very well. Equally, you can have them in full sun. Um, so they're just one of those. What's not to like, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's not to like. I mean, this will definitely have a lifetime guarantee on it because it is such a super, super hardy plant. Um, you and get... the top, that's the grafting point there, isn't it, Adam? Yeah. So, that... so we, we, we work with expert grafters who really, really... <laughs> we're not, we're so dusted, we're not, we do, do we class ourselves as grafters? Uh, well, so, sometimes I graft. Yeah, like, some days. gardening can yeah. be grafting. It is, it be. yeah. yeah. Um, but the grafters, they, they've grafted the top of this onto this tall, straight stem. You can actually see the, the join there. And that will keep it this shape. The only thing I will say, occasionally, you do, you might get the odd side shoot on the lower part of this. Just take that off, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, don't cut it off. When you first see it come out, just grab it off with your thumb. Yeah. Just kind of brush it off like that that way it will completely detach from the stem and it won't reshoot but yeah i mean this this here i can't say exactly which one but this will be another variety of viburnum that this is grown on this is called the rootstock and then this is the plant you want on top which they call the the um the, the scion so yeah they just graft one to the other it's amazing really, yeah, isn't it? And, and you just end up with this this plant that is um as you see there so because so, ordinarily if you if you didn't graft that this would have to be growing directly from the ground and that would form Form a sort of a multi-branch, really wide shrub that in a small garden you couldn't have. But now you can enjoy the beauty of a viburnum like this, as I say, a thousand times, even three floors yeah. up on a little balcony. Just let, I mean, I'm dying to hear what our lovely gardening friends at home think of this one. Because we all, literally when Craig brought it to the potting shed, we all went, oh my word. Uh, I mean, it just took our breath away. That is a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, to me, it looks more like a paniculatum hydrangea and, and it's the fragrance as well Sean. yeah I mean, obviously you can't smell it at home but oh my goodness me that that is so lovely yeah. really imagine lovely. that's a present for somebody as well i'm not being funny you can easily spend 25 pounds on a nice bouquet of flowers but you've got that for years if not a lifetime stunning 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 you are a beauty right gonna move on to uh, we've got a little bit of grow your own on the show today we've got kiwi coming up we've got honey berries we've got strawberries over there but we're going to start off with one of my absolute favorite fruits which is uh, cherries but the other thing adam when we think of cherry trees we think of huge things we think of cherry pickers the machinery to pick the cherries but actually this is completely different it's a bush it's a bush yeah this is a, and it's literally it's all its own thing this hasn't been grafted like the viburnum we just showed you this is growing on its own root system but it won't become a tree this only gets about four to six foot tall um, and it will be multi-branched and it will have absolute masses and masses of yeah, cherries we're on there. kilos and kilos. Yeah, kilos we? and yeah. kilos of cherries. So kind of second half of the summer, that's when they're going to ripen. That's when, they, when they're going to kick in. And after it's finished fruiting, you can trim it down. You can prune it down to where you want it to be. The new shoots will come back. They'll give you fruit again next year. But of course, this time of year, you get the, the gorgeous blossom. It's self-fertile as well, so you don't need to worry about it being pollinated. Obviously, these gorgeous yeah. flowers, the bees and the pollinating insects w will arrive anyway. And then It's really you, pretty, actually, isn't it? Yeah, and you, well, you can see these ones here. They've already been pollinated. And underneath, you can already see this bit underneath is starting to swell. And that is the start of the, of the cherry, where that little swelling is there. That is the cherry starting to develop. And as the weeks go by, that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually you'll get your own super juicy. Yeah. Uh, I'm smiling actually because I'm remembering okay. your story from yesterday about uh, you won't be paying £14 pounds yeah. for a, a box of cherries. And like this is a true, <laughs> true story if you, if you missed her yesterday. I, I, it was a few years ago. I remember I did a mini shop. I won't name the supermarket, but it was, great. It was quite a, a high end one. High, it was. Um, and yeah, and I, was, I got back to the car and I was driving and I thought, hang on, that's not right. I think it was about £40 for the shop and I had about three or four things in my carry bag. And then when I got home and looked at the receipt, the 
punnet of cherries was £14. And it was a reasonable sized punnet. But I was like, I felt so... And I nearly took them back, but I thought, well, that's wasting petrol. And I, I ended up scoffing a lot anyway. But £14. Yeah. And they were beautiful cherries. But, I mean, you could feed a whole family for the day on that bit, much, couldn't you? You could. And, I mean, I mean you know, for, for, well, I mean, for another uh, sort of... Well, for, for another sort of £4 or so, if you're in the club, um, you, you could buy a, a cherry yeah. tree like this and have cherries forever. Yeah. Um, and we always say... We, we normally say when we've got... A lot of our fruit trees are bare roots. And we often say, oh, you won't get much of a crop the first year. But because this is already potted and growing, you can see on this one here, you are going to get not the biggest crop in the first year, but you are going to get some nice cherries in the first yeah, year. Yeah, because these flowers will become cherries. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's that's the way it goes. So, you know, the, the, the fact that these have got all flowers on, each one of these flowers will become a cherry. So you, you could end up with a pound or a couple of pounds of cherries, even from this kind of small plant at the moment, because once the plant's been in two, three, four years and it's really got established and it's multi-branched, wow, you're just yeah. going to get more and more each year. And I love the idea. I mean, I won't... I won't bang my drum too loudly, but we've just had... I mean, every month seems to be a record break. It's either the wettest month, the warmest month. I think we've had the, one of the warmest Marches on record. Yeah, so, we? yeah, again. We had one of the wettest Februarys on record. So the bottom line is we, we, we all need to do our little bit. And if you could just cut down on food miles just a little bit, that would be great, wouldn't it? And if you think about fruit in the supermarkets, the, the journey that it's had, all of that plastic packaging. So if you could just grow, like we used to, my, my gran was, a, was very poor, she brought four kids by herself. So she tried to cram as much in her garden to grow herself as she possibly could. But if we could all just grow a few things in our garden, the impact is actually quite big, isn't it? It, it would make sense, Sean, because sometimes you can have a punnet of things like cherries, for example, and you look and it says produce of Guatemala or somewhere yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh my goodness me! Somebody the other side of the earth has, has kind of picked those cherries, and then you know they've, they've been packed in plastic yeah. packaging, and then they've been flown all the way across the Atlantic, and then they've been transported in a lorry to the supermarket, oh. and then from <laughs> the supermarket to my home in my car. And what do you think about it? what a mess that is? It, actually, it, it, it's, it's not sustainable it's long not, term, is it? It's we, not. As a species, we we're not going to be able to do this forever. No. Where, and, and, and in the old days, you ate seasonally, didn't you? You did, yeah. And, and I think that's where we're going back to as well. And, and that's a great thing. What I love working for you garden is because um, you, you know, we can bang on about this but then other people can say yeah well that's fair enough you can say that guys I can't grow a cherry tree in my garden I haven't got the space but this is where we bring you these fantastic yeah. innovative plants because with something like this this cherry tree is small enough for you to be able to grow in a small garden yeah. and have your own home produced cherries and if every single one of us just grew a few things the, this is like the difference would be amazing. It really was. And, and eventually, you know, because you know, buying power as a public always kind of changes the habits, doesn't it, of supermarkets and producers. And, you know, if more and more people were growing their own stuff, they wouldn't be getting the stuff from abroad anymore. No. And then they'd start to, you know, source stuff yeah, more locally. And, right. and, you know, all that aside, it's just such great fun and so rewarding to grow your own fruit and veg. So Stu, because Stu's our head of technical, so this is for me, he said, if trees gave off Wi-Fi, just imagine how many trees the government would be planting. It's true. But these give off, you know, when we think of <laughs> what, what these actually do give off. Although the irony is from what Stu just said, they do have their own Wi-Fi trees because we're discovering now when we look at the roots of trees under the ground, it is, it's like a super highway. You are I mean, so right. They're all connected up yeah. and, and, and they're all sending messages to each other under the ground. I mean, it, it is mind-blowing what we're finding out now anyway, about roots. we better move on, but that is an amazing cherry tree. It's 1999, 300, 176. Grab it right now. I want to say big hello to everyone that is watching this morning. Good morning, Angela. She just replanted her cherry tree. Oh, good. As she said, it says she replanted it a little while ago and it's been loads healthier. So, great news, Angela. Thank you so much. Uh, Elaine, um, she's just been talking about her Torino pot. She's got some lovely primroses in them. I bet they look great. L nice contrast with the yellow. Yeah. Yellow and that copper colour. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. Very good. Morning, Neil. So Neil, uh, sorry Neil, I didn't realise it had been his birthday, but he's got some birthday cash to spend. Well, I'll tell you what, Neil. If, we'll help you with that, Neil, yeah, don't if, you worry. If you've got kind of a, a specific area in mind that you're thinking of getting a plant for, tell us what the area yeah. is and we'll see if we can suggest I mean, something you know, that we've got for it. Neil, we are in very good company with Adam today. So, 
multi award winning gardener's aunt at Chelsea, but a proper hands on gardener. You actually look after gardeners. I do. Yeah, locally, I, feel, I don't yeah. just walk around with a clipboard. No, he's uh, not like, you know, he doesn't have a team and an entourage. He's like, no. right. No. Place that plant there. We'll have several of those there. No, he's hands on. You can tell from his hands. Yeah. We're both laughing. Both of our hands are like really old. And I did try and moisturise last night though because it'll do like... look a bit. Bad. Actually, no, it's worked. Yeah, I, I really. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's Neil's yard. Got yeah. expensive. Is it? There you go. So Neil, <laughs> if there's something particular that you want to see on the show, since it's been your birthday, or you want some particular advice, then just uh, just message while uh, Adam's with us. Alice is new. Good morning, Alice. Alice. Thank you for finding us on Facebook. Uh, and don't forget, anyone that's watching us on there, maybe their tablets or their phones, you can watch us on your big TV if it's a smart TV connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, and all you need to do is go to the YouTube app and type in YouGarden and you'll find us. Uh, Philip, good morning. Uh, Dingo from the Turkey Sanctuary. Morning. Uh, I, Roger I, and Amanda. I thought you said turtle to start with. No, oh, it's tur turtle yeah, or said turkey? Tur did I say turkey? I meant... I meant oh, it's tur turtle. Did it sound like turkey? I meant turtle. Yeah. But you said turkey. I said turkey. <laughs> well, no, because a turkey sanctuary could be a place, couldn't it? Could. Because obviously, you know, in another six or seven months, it's not going to be a good time oh, for turkeys, is it? So, Josh. No, I meant turtle, yeah. sorry. Somebody, perhaps somebody's doing turkey rescue. Oh, dear. Connor has just uh, said, what fruit bushes? Well, on the show, we've got the cherry, but I'll be honest, on our website, and you, you can uh, shop the website, we've got every type of fruit tree, but we've also got, coming up, the honeyberry, which is the most delicious fruit. I've got them myself, Adam's got them, and it's a cross between like a blackberry, a blueberry, string, and we've got kiwis coming up. And we've got strawberries as well. Yeah. So we've got a lot of fruit. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and we've got the, put the cherry right in front of us. So, yeah, yeah quite, quite a lot. So we've got a good, else, really good selection. Scan him round. But let's say there's everything on our website, yeah. everything that you can imagine. Right. I think we'd better go over there. Should we start? Well, as soon as we mentioned, should we start with the strawberries? We just mentioned that. Yeah, let's go for it. Because these are yeah. really good. These are the Colossus strawberries. Now, the first thing that Adam and I both said, the quality of the runners. Uh, the plugs around, I should say, that you've got here. These are beautiful, aren't they, Sean? Look. These are really... They're called jumbo plugs because they, they are... They are huge, I've got to say, and they are so healthy. I think they're some of the best strawberry plugs that I've ever seen, actually. Oh, Would you agree, I, Adam? I, I, well, yeah, because, you know, sometimes, Sean, you can look at some strawberry plugs and sometimes they, they're a bit yellowy sometimes and they look a little bit contorted and not quite yeah. up, up to the job. But these, and in fact, I've even noticed on this one down here, um, I've spied in the middle. Look, look, little... Little flower yeah. stem just already so coming there. I, I would say compared to a lot of strawberry runners and plugs that we bring you, these are a little bit further on, they're a lot more well established and they're just raring to find a home. Aren't these they? can go straight out into the garden. Yeah. There's, there's no problem with planting these straight outside. And these are the Colossus strawberry. Now you can end up with individual strawberries weighing as much as 40 grams. And Again, I'm going to be up front with you. I have tried some of these large strawberry varieties in the past and they're a bit watery and um, they, they don't always kind of get ripe to the middle and they're a bit gimmicky. What I love about the Colossus one is when you leave them in your garden to ripen to that perfect moment all the way through to the middle, they are sweet, they are delicious, yeah. they are strawberry flavoured. That's what's great about them. I totally agree. And do you know what I love about this? Sounds really, uh, it sounds like I'm lazy. But if you buy a of strawberries and they're all really small, because you always need to wash them and you want to, I always take the tops off. I'll take the top off, yeah. But it's, it's a lot more work. But when you've got nice big strawberries, it's just so much easier to prepare them. Slice, and slice, slice. Yeah. yeah. And, and a pavlova. So they look really good as well because you get really big, strong slices. They're yeah. great on top of a cheesecake and things like that. But the taste is amazing on these. And you will get fruit this year because we've seen the flowers there. But obviously the crops do get a lot bigger. Years yeah, and you'll get about five or six years worth out of these strawberries as well. And these strawberries, they do produce runners, but they don't produce like an insane amount of runners. So you're not going to end up with kind of a huge... Because they can look a mess then, can't Yeah, they? sometimes you can get just a huge tangle of strawberries and you don't know kind of where you are with them. But yeah, five or six years, these are going to fruit for you really, and, really well. And again, Adam, these can easily be grown in 
pots, any kind of containers. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, I've even seen people grow strawberries in hanging baskets. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah when good. they're up in the baskets, where it stops the slugs and snails getting to them as well, which is really, really good. Oh, and I'd say you can do as well if you want to, because obviously they're called strawberries because we, um, you know, they're grown on straw and kept off the ground. We've actually got a product called Strolch that you can put around these as well. So, you know, in the past, if you've had uh, your strawberries being attacked, um, uh, you know, by um, slugs and snails, and it's really annoying, is it, when your strawberries? Yeah, you yeah. Know, you, you pick it up and the bottom half's been eaten by a slug. Yeah, so you know, get yourself some strolch and put that round and then you've, you've got those strawberries really, really well protected. Yeah. So um, get the kids involved as well. And it's so important. If you've got children, grandchildren, get them to grow some strawberries. It couldn't be easier. And this is an absolutely outstanding variety. Now, just a, a few little tips. Whenever you buy any plug plants from us here at U Garden, the first thing you really want to do, because they will have been in transit a couple of days, is give them a little soak. So I'd, I'd take these out, I'd put them in a little bowl of water, just rehydrate them, and then get them planted as soon as you possibly can. But these are great, as Adam said, in pots, containers, hanging baskets, beds and boards, Orders. But if they are going in the ground, particularly, I would put something like stalks around them when, when they're beginning to fruit. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. And, and just another quick thing is to just tell you as well, when you do take your plants out of the packet, especially if they're different varieties, yeah, just yeah. remember to, to mark each one as you take it, because if you just take them out all straight away and then plonk them into some water and they're all different colours, you won't know. So yeah, just, and I've actually done that. Yeah. I've done that a few times because I'm just so eager. But... Um, couldn't be easy to grow those. No, I mean, and again, I mean, you say the quality of these is it's really just, it's just phenomenal. I mean, the fact that these have already got flower buds coming, yeah. the root system on that is absolutely fabulous. These are green, these are vigorous, these are healthy. These are going to fruit for you this year. They start fruiting in June, so these are kind of midsummer, and you'll get like about four to six weeks of, of fruit on these. Um, and very again, sunny spot as yeah, a yeah, soft fruit. Nice open sunny spot, yeah. um, disease resistant. Yeah, just, just try them and then send us, um, send us pictures. And that is 320074. We've just had a request to see the honeyberry. We will go to it in about uh, four to five minutes time. Ish. Sounds like the actress. So it again. Honeyberry. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah like it does. Very similar. But yeah, we can't wait to show it's there, so we've got to come to it next. Now, um, I absolutely fell in love with these yesterday. And it's actually a triple up deal. So it's one for 9 99 but for an extra three pounds, you can go for three which is incredible. But you do need to put three in your basket. And this is the uh, Decentra, or Dicentra, Dicentra Alba. Now I've got this in like a pinky colour. Yeah, you could get sort of pink or yeah. red colours, um, which is sort of the, the most popular. The, the white I like because it's particularly unusual. It's, it, it's very different. But the good thing about these is these are what we refer to as herbaceous perennials, which basically means in their yearly life cycle, they come up, they flower, they die down, disappear down to ground level or underground level in the autumn and winter, and then they repeat the cycle the following year. But the good thing about these ones is these are very, very early flowering perennials. They're flowering right now, and they've already been flowering for a week or so, and they will keep flowering for another three or four weeks. So if you've got uh, what we call a herbaceous border in your garden, and you're looking at it at the moment, but all you're seeing is lupins that are just three or four inches tall, delphiniums that yeah. are not much taller, and all the other perennials are only just sort of coming up, and you're just thinking, oh, I can't wait till June or July to see all these finally come into flower and give me color. Dicentra are brilliant because they are flowering right now as a perennial, so you can plant these between your current perennials. And the reason you can do that is because these don't actually stay around all summer. Once they're flowering, Howard. They keep this nice foliage for probably about four to six weeks. But then as we get towards later uh, spring, midsummer, they die back. They turn yellow. They kind of just sort of die down to the ground. And then that's, they're out the way again until next spring. But of course, by that point, all the other perennials yeah. that you've got are taking yeah. over. That's when your delphiniums, your that's lupins, it. your hollyhocks your foxgloves, your digitalis, they're all, yeah, that's when they're all bursting into life. Yeah, and because these by then have died back, they're not in competition. These are not yeah. going to get overwhelmed. They're not going to be competed with because these have then taken a backstage uh, and let the other perennials Adam, come I, back. Honestly, when you said that yesterday, it, it was just like a light bulb moment for me. And I was like, yeah, I definitely want more of these because I am in that position in a couple of borders where, yeah, they look empty still. Yeah. And there's only, you know, the, 
say the small little bits of loopings coming through and my delphiniums are really slow actually and my poppies even actually yeah you've got to wait a good few more weeks yeah. you, for those to give you color whereas so these, these bridge that gap they bridge the gap and and then and then so the good thing is they don't then go on to compete with the later perennials because they die down and and, and sort of go to sleep and and, and it, it's, it's quite good because you'll probably forget you've bought these and then you'll go out again next year, probably late March, early April, and you'll think to yourself, what's those little green shoots coming up? What, what, what did and I put in there? And then you'll remember, and then you'll get this fantastic surprise. And once they become established, they get to about two or three feet tall, and they really become quite multi-branched. Wow. And you'll get dozens and dozens of these lovely white flowers. They call them Dutchman's Britches, is a sort of a common but name. But they're actually, to me, they're like heart-shaped as well. Yeah, well, look at this plant here, Sean, yeah. with those heart-shaped flowers yeah. on. Yeah. Isn't that glorious? Um, uh, but so it's quite new to the white ones. I've got, I've got one of the pink ones. I love the white though. The, I, I do. Just I do. Really nice about the white. It's classic. It's um, elegant. It's timeless. Now we've done a really special deal for this week. It is a triple up deal. So you need to put three in your basket. When you do that, the price will reduce to twelve pounds and ninety eight pence. And I, I, I went to a lovely. Um, talk at my garden club last month we had nick bailey uh you'll know he's quite a famous garden he's been on gardens world and all sorts but he did talk about 365 days of color in your garden and that really hit home with it because you want you got i mean we live for our gardens don't we you live for your gardens and you really want to get your garden looking as good as possible all year round and actually climate change you never nowadays know which months are going to be good. It used to be like distinct seasons. Yeah, now they're, they're, they're all, the seasons have all sort of shunted along yeah. a bit now as well. I, I, I find quite often now October and September almost like summer months. Yeah. But then March and April can quite often be like winter months still. Yeah. So it's all, all kind of moved along. But if you can have plants that you know are going to, a variety of plants that are going to perform to fill up the whole year. It's got to be good. So really, I think they, they are going to go quickly, I think. Uh, 560767. Now, we've got to move on to uh, a request, actually. A lot of you uh, have been asking in the chat about the honey berry. We're delighted to talk about it right now because we've both got this. You didn't get any crop last year, did you? Because it was your first year, right, and say. It was, yeah. Um, I, I got a small crop last year but it was delicious just quickly before we talk about this um somebody just said they've tried loads of times to get the triple deal on the uh dicentra and it hasn't worked so we're going to show you how to do that because it fingers crossed it is working so don't order that don't order the three what you need to do go for one put three in your basket let's just see so the price comes down. So you actually have to put three of the individual one, which is 560767, then enter our code. You've got to put our code in. That's to get all the discounts today, which is YGTV1524. And that unlocks all the promotions. That was for you, Anna. So hopefully that's going to work. You should do. 100%. And Anna, if you want to save extra money, if you join our discount club today, you'll get 10% off all your plants and the... Uh, Discount Club is there on a special price of just £5 a year at the moment on auto renewal. Right, Adam, let's, let's talk honeyberry. Yeah, and I'm, I'm annoyed. I've been a bit of a muppet, actually, because um, I, sh I should have taken a picture of mine in my front garden, shouldn't I? I should have, should, should have taken a picture. And I've got one in the front garden. It's flowering. I'm talking about it. Ooh, why didn't you bring a picture in, you silly man? I'll, uh, I'll need to do that. I'll, I'll tell you right, well, if you've got one in your garden flowering, you said there's a picture. So, um, now, the flowers, my, I mean, I shouldn't say mine's flowering right now. They're... they're like white, long tubular ones, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, they, they are. So like yellowy like, white. Yeah, like little yeah. honeysuckle flowers. Because yeah. this is honeysuckle family. It's Lanicera. So th th this is a, a honeysuckle that produces an edible fruit. These live up to about 25, 30 years. So they're, wow. they're long lived. Um, God, we'll, be, we'll be 60 by the time then. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been a prime by then, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Absolutely. That's a long time to get fruit, isn't it? It is, yeah. It. And it's a, it's a good time to get really unusual, magical, gorgeous, kind of really unusual fruit as well. They're very robust shrubs. They're incredibly hardy. So these are going to get through any winter, any summertime. They don't get massively tall. Again, about sort of four to six foot tall. So not a huge, great big kind of fruit tree or fruit bush that's going to be overwhelming. And Adam, they don't seem 
I mean, mine's quite a bit bigger than this, and now I'm not supporting it. It doesn't seem to need a lot of support. No, no, these are kind of like a woody honeysuckle. Um, you, you, some of you might have the Fragrantissima honeysuckle in your garden, which is the winter flowering yeah, honeysuckle, well, which yeah. is a shrubby honeysuckle. That's not and like that, the, that the, does need support, doesn't it? Uh, no, well, the shrubby one doesn't because it's got quite vigorous stems. But obviously, if you've got the, the sort of the columbine kind of honeysuckle, the Dutch honeysuckle, then that, oh, that, that, that's yeah, a climber. That, that's that, the one that you do have to yeah, like, and tease that, at the trellis. Exactly, isn't it? and that needs something to support it. But, but these are more of the, this is more the of a model. shrubby type of honeysuckle. And you can tell by the stems at the base here, it's got those very thick kind of supportive stems. And for the first two or three years, just leave this, just, just leave it to grow. Don't, don't, worry about pruning or anything but once it's been in sort of three or four or five years what you can do is each year just go into the base of the plant and just take out some of the stems that are getting a bit woody a little bit old a bit non-productive if any of the stems are crisscrossing or rubbing take them out as well and, and just kind of aim to keep the structure of it you know a little bit open in the middle so it's not too congested and that's all you've got to do each year and then just sit back and let it fruit and enjoy the fruit. And can I just tell you about the fruit? Because I did get a crop last year and it was only small because it was the first year. I can honestly say they were incredible. I mean, honestly, I wish I'd filmed it because I was like, I, I bit into it, I was like, oh my word, it was <laughs> stunning. And it, they, they're like an oval looking blueberry, really. Right. But they, they didn't have the sharpness of the blueberry. They were really beautifully sweet and quite fleshy, actually, but full of flavour and taste. And I literally, I mean, I was a bit greedy. I pretty much ate my entire crop instantly. Um, I did. I was, I mean, they were just stunning. But the great thing is they're really high in antioxidants as well. But we were very lucky. We actually had... Uh, our head gardener, Peter McDermott, he, he made a VIP visit to the uh, potting shed a few weeks ago. But he was also working with Greg Wallace, who you'll know from the, the, you know, the big famous cookery programmes on the TV. And we've actually got a little clip for you right now that's really interesting. It's Peter McDermott, our head gardener, with the one and only Greg Wallace, talking about this honey berry. I've got a podcast called Piece of Cake, and I interview experts in, in health mm. and, and wellness. And I'm learning about polyphenols that you get in fruits with different colours, mm. particularly dark-skinned fruits, vegetables. That's what it is that's good for you, the polyphenols, and they're what feed the gut microbiome. These gut microbiomes are there. Do you know, the gut apparently works independently of the brain. It's one of the only organs that does. Mm. And we are Mine only does when I'm hungry. <laughs> and we're only beginning mm. to it learn about... It controls my brain. <laughs> you know. But look, look, seriously, seriously... <laughs> You can grow honey berries, which I've never seen before, which is great. But honestly, get as much different fruits, plants, grains, whole grains, legumes, yeah. pulses into it as Some, you can. Somebody said the best way of, de of describing how you should eat is always create a rainbow on your plate. As many different colours, and I'm not, and I'm not talking like, um, you know, custard, <laughs> jelly, <laughs> hundreds and thousands, <laughs> sports mix. Um, no, this is this, we're talking about. As I think in, in a week, the, the sort of target is, they, they say five portions of fruit or vegetables a day, which is a great, is a great thing to aim for. I try to, I love, the, the, the good thing for me is I actually really like fruit and vegetables. You know, uh, broccoli is one of my absolute favorite things to eat. 30 different types a week. I, 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 I interviewed this doctor, Megan Rossi, lovely lady. But then you've got fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, whole grains, Okay, and pulses, yep. and you, you can actually do it. You, yeah. know, you can easily eat six at one at one at one Easy. sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think honeyberries is one of those things, though. So if we think about the stuff we've looked at today, you know, if you said I've got a limited amount of space, you know, perhaps because modern gardens have got smaller. You know, literally, if you if you if you live in a slightly more rural setting, you probably will end up with a bigger garden. But most people who live in a town or, or a city, they they will there will always be a restriction on the amount of space you have available to you for outdoor um, enjoyment. And and of course, then you really perhaps do want to get make sure you've got a table and chairs and somewhere for the barbecue. But dotted around that, if you're careful, you can have a wigwam of raspberries. You can have a few pots with potatoes grown in them. You can have three pots with the early, mid and late season blueberries. And you could have a wigwam with your honeyberry. And suddenly we're talking about five a day. There's more than four of them um, just here today. 
by the time you add in those duo uh, fruit trees. Health aside, I think there's something terribly lovely about going out of your garden mm. with your bowl of yogurt yeah. and actually picking your fruit yeah. to put on your... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how extraordinary is that? Yeah, 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 exactly. How wonderful is that? And, and the thing I didn't know was the point you made around the temperatures and not over-chilling these, these yeah. you know, is much better for them. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And when you pick them fresh from the plant, it can't get better, but let them, let them be just... room temperature. And a honeyberry is not difficult to grow. Oh, so I'm easy. guessing the reason we don't see these in the shops is they just don't grow commercially in big quantities. Not right? yet. I think I think increasingly um, they will become available. But you've got you've got a relatively um, new item that's that's. So if you want to grow again, it's one of those things. Gardeners, um, I'm I, me, and I'm definitely one of these people. Gardeners love to grow things that other people don't tend to grow. It's about a bit of one-upmanship, you know, I'm, I'm the, you know, I'm the gardening king, <laughs> you know, King King Kong. This is, this is all about growing something perhaps that other people haven't necessarily grown before. Uh, but it, it's not been left out because there's any reason to. It's just, it's, just, it's just grown in popularity because people have suddenly become aware that it produces good crops of those delicious fruits. You know, I think they would be great in things like yeah. um, in, 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 in breakfasts or in yeah. muffins or whatever. <laughs> uh, can I just recap? Because I've, I've said, I don't know whether you've been here in the start, I'm not a gardener, but I do now have a decent garden. And I lost my father-in-law, Massimo, in, um, in November, bless him. And he used to do the gardening. Mm. Um, I would like to, I'm into my food, I would love to have this stuff. Yes, that was Greg Wallace there with our fabulous head gardener, Peter McDermott. Um, he said he'd love one of these in his garden. Now, we are getting a lot of interest on this. I have to say, the price, because we, I do remember selling like really small ones in nine centimetre pots. The price we've got today, you can double up and go for two of these. This is the size you're going to get for just £14.98. And, pence. and um, you know, I was saying that the, the taste of the fruit is amazing, but full of nutrients, really high in antioxidants. For me, this is win-win, and it looks attractive as well, it, doesn't it? It does look attractive, and as we were saying earlier on, zero air miles on that fruit yeah. as well, and, and you know exactly how it's been grown, so, you know, you can grow it organically if you want to, you know, it's not been sprayed of anything or treated of anything, um, and it's, it's just good for once, isn't it, to just get away from, like, bananas, apples, oranges, you know, something a bit different, yeah. something a bit unusual, and again, I, you know, I think as, um, you know, as the world develops and time moves on, we are going to start eating kind of different sorts of fruit in the future, aren't we? It's not going to be the same old, same old. And something as easy to grow as this um, is, is just going to be brilliant. Uh, now, um, is it Angela that's just messaging? She said she got some, like, mushrooms. They're probably not mushrooms, but there's some sort of fungus. That, just to be honest, that, that's probably just something from the compost, uh, just like a little bit of um, mycorrhiza or something in the compost. That's, so th 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 that's just natural. I mean, it, it, when I'm gardening, I see yeah. toadstools, mushrooms, fungi yeah. popping up anywhere all over the time so yeah don't worry about that in a few weeks they'll disappear and that'll be that yeah so so uh, yes do not worry about those it will not affect no your just, just brush them away if you don't want yeah. them just just brush them off and yeah don't i get quite a few my garden. i think it's because there's areas that are quite damp and wet and uh, spring spring and autumn you, yeah. you you see them but once you get to sort of midsummer they disappear you, you might even find in the autumn they'll pop back again but they're honestly yeah. don't nothing worry. to worry about uh, right I think this one's going to be really busy today. You can double up, don't forget, two for fourteen ninety eight. Cannot recommend it highly. I can't. I hope you get some fruit the first year like I did, because then you really appreciate just how delicious they are. Incredible, right? April sun. That's is a rarity. Next. <laughs> hey, no, it's sunny today. We've got we've got really good weather coming up. Over the weekend, it's, it's going to be this colour at the end of the sun, well, maybe a bit more orange. But um, this looks spectacular. Now, I've never grown this one. Most of the plants on the show I've grown or grown varieties of, but this one is quite new to me. I well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, actually. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tilt this plant yeah, forward. Yeah, go so, on, um, so I can I, see all the buds. Yeah, I think you kind of, you, you can, there you go, look. You can wow. see it so much more nicely at, at that angle like that. Um, this is one of those plants that is just great for that really hot, sunny, dry, 
awful kind of area that nothing else will survive. You know, sometimes you, you've got the really thin soils, you've got the poor stony soils, gravelly soils, sandy soil. Um, whatever you put in there, it goes yellow, it, it, it's, sort of, it's weak, it won't grow. This plant loves that kind of abuse. Honestly, it does. It, it likes to be in that really ghastly, dreadful area. It loves a challenge. You and know, it loves to be baked then? It loves to be baked. So, you know, full sun is, is what this plant really, really adores. I'll put it back on the up right now. But yeah, full sun is, is what it really likes. Full sun, really acute drainage. Um, somewhere quite sheltered and sunny. It is a hardy plant. I, 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 can you just check you? This, does this have a lifetime? I think it has, doesn't it? We will check. Um, and um, just to explain what, what we're looking for. If, um, if you ever buy a plant from your garden and it has the, the little symbol, which is, I think we're pretty sure this one does actually, Adam, but just double check. Yeah, there it is there, so, yeah, of course. So if it has that snowflake and it says winter hardy, that means it is backed by our lifetime guarantee, which is great news. So if this didn't survive, let our customer service team know and they will give you a new one. All you'd pay is the postage. So you've got that back and that's on any plant that's got that snowflake symbol saying winter hardy, we would replace it for free, which is incredible. Because sometimes I'll, I'll, if I was to buy a plant and it was quite expensive, you, you do think, oh, what, what if it doesn't survive? What? Because you, know, you can spend 40, 50 pounds on a plant, can't well, you? Well, more. I, I bought a palm tree years ago and I paid 494 pounds for this, this particular palm. Oh, God, and, I'd be uh, so nervous. And, and it, it didn't get through its second year. Um, oh. And we had a really, really harsh winter and, and it, the, the middle of it just rotted off and died. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and I lost that palm. And uh, there was no guarantee wow. on that. So that was, that was a tough so, uh, learning curve. It was, bless you, Adam. <laughs> Feel for you. Feel your pain there. <laughs> but uh, this has got that lifetime guarantee. Now, we, we were talking about this before the show, and the flowers, they are a little bit like, I call it a rock rose. Yeah, like, like a rock rose, rose flower. Um, now, if you love this and you adore this, it's got that evergreen foliage as well, so it, you know, it looks like this pretty much all the year through. But if you want it and you love it, just top tip on this, plant it in the sunniest, most shelter position you can in really well drawn soil and plant it so it's on its own. Don't make it compete with other plants. You know, make it stand alone. And that is where it will thrive really, really well. That's where it will do really, really well in that really hot, sunny, super well drained position. Or it makes a fabulous pot plant. That's what I'm saying. Great for a pot. Yeah. So again, if you're three floors up and you've got that super sunny south facing, south facing balcony and you want this glorious yellow colour, not just for April, but going into May and even into June, and this happy, happy looking plant, honestly, go for this because it is stunning and it's compact. It won't actually get massively bigger than that. It might get another sort of six, seven, eight inches. But when it's finished flowering, you can just trim it over. You know, like you trim back lavender, you can just give this a little trip and a, a little not a little trip, a little hey. clip and a trim round, and it'll just keep it compact and, and nice and healthy. But you've just given me a thought there, because my French lavender is just beginning to, it's close to coming out. So if I had French lavender in pots, and then this next to because yellow and purple can look great together, can't they? Really, really nice yeah. combination, yellow and purple. Um, I think you've just sold me one of these, Adam. Uh, 510840, uh, just 1499. We've called it April Sun there. And I mean, to get this kind of display in April, absolutely phenomenal. And one thing I do remember you telling me, Adam, because I don't know this one, but I'm not going to pretend to do, um, the flowers, they don't last long, maybe a day or so, but you get them constantly coming through, don't you? Do. You do, yeah. I mean, you can see on the one here, Sean, I mean, there's so many buds coming. There's literally yeah, yeah, hundreds, hundreds of buds on there. So, yeah, they, they last about a day or two, and then the next day more pop out. So it'll always have flowers on it. And, and they do flower for a really, really long period. And then sometimes when the main flowering period's over, they do occasionally just pop out a few more flowers sort of here and there. But right. the early part of the... Um, the season is when it looks its, its, its nicest. Well, we are. I think we're going to have a really busy show today. Just really quickly, don't forget, you get free delivery if you spend over £40. So if you're spending under £40, our delivery is capped at £6.99 an order. So do bear that in mind. We want you to save as much money as possible. But if you manage to get your order over £40, you will get free delivery today as well. And your free gift, as long as you use the code, these are absolutely fabulous. And I mean that. You get one of these free with every order. So even if you've already placed an order today, I know you're thinking, oh, hang on, I need some compost. Place a second order or a third order, you'll get a second or a third free gift. And these are great grow bags. So trees, potatoes, uh, 
was going to say strawberries. It could grow strawberries, yeah, but I don't see why not. Bit, yeah, it could go strawberries in there. Yeah, I'd say the good thing about it is it's quite big for strawberries, isn't it? Oh, you, you could fold it over a little bit on yeah. the top if you wanted, and just have it half right, the height. Be fine, wouldn't they? Yeah, but I mean, because it's polypropylene as well, it's, this is never going to rot. This bag, you know, th th yeah. this bag's going to be completely rot-proof, weatherproof, and uh, really, I mean, just great for shopping. Seriously, cat, really heavy things like cat litter, cat food. Adam's twelve bottles of wine on special <laughs> offer, absolutely fine. But uh, they're brilliant. They are right. We better move on. But so much to uh, to show you and to share with you. Keep those messages coming in. So. Adam's with us right now. Bex is, uh, Bex is on holiday today. She's having a few days off, so uh, Adam's here. But you are here quite regularly now, aren't you? Yeah, which is nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's great, great to be part of the team. And uh, yeah, we'll, we're, we're, whenever we're in together, we always have a great buzz, don't we? Yeah. We have a great kind of chat. And um, that, that's what's really nice about what we're doing at YouGuard. You know, Sean and I, you know, as some of you might know, we, we, did, we had a previous life doing stuff on TV. Yeah, we... um, and that was nice, but this is so much nicer because, you know, we, we're, we're right in the midst of the nursery. Um, and I don't know, this is so much more laid back, isn't it? And we, we, yeah. we've got more input and we're more interaction with yourselves I at home. And that's more, what we love. It's more real. It's more personal. It's it more, is. Yeah, it's more, yeah, it's more real. Yeah. Mm. And we know how, you know, so many of you now, it's, we, we're all part of this, this gardening community, which is lovely. And I know a lot of you have made friends with each other through the chat as well. And I consider many of you our friends now as well, of course. We, we, I know we speak a lot on social media. Talking to which, brother, if you do want to follow us on social media, um, you can come directly into the, the potting shed, email us ygtv at yougarden.com. And if you want to see what I'm up to, uh, when I'm not here in the potting shed, it's Sean Ryan, presenter and plant man on Facebook and Instagram. I'll be honest, I do, I do do a lot more on Facebook, but I do do a little bit on Instagram as well. And we are making one for you, Adam. That's nice, thank yes. you very much. Yeah, that'd be great, lovely. Yes. But you can tell us what yours is. Well, mine's very sick, it's just Adam dot Woolcott. So, and that's W double O L C O double T Woolcott. There you go. Adam dot Woolcott on Instagram. Yeah, that's easy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And TikTok. Um, but uh, Adam put some great little reels on Instagram. So, uh, yes, we would love you to follow us. We really, really would. Right, we better move on. Uh, now, something that I've grown for many, many, many years, decades, centuries, not quite centuries, uh, petunias. And I grow them every year. And I, I always get the plug plants. I mean, I, I have grown petunias from seed, but again, they're, the t they're like, they're tiny, they are, under the yeah, seeds. They are tiny. They um, really are. Yeah, and they're like, like and when you grow those really tiny seeds and you, even you water them really carefully, they, they all end up kind of going to one yeah, little... Do. And then you have about 10 seedlings. Or, and then yeah. when you try and, like, you know, pricking them out, they, they will, you tear all the leaves yeah. off. And it's like, why didn't I just buy plug plants? I know. Give I mean, an easy life. Don't get us wrong. Seeds are great. And if you've got the time, the patience, the skill... But you know what? We've done all of that hard work for you. You are going to get 12 magnificent plugs here. This, this is the Patriotic Petunia Mix. 12, three colours. You probably guessed it. It's called Patriotic Red, White and Blue, which is a great colour mix. But we really pride ourselves on the quality of our plug plugs. And I actually, I potted up my Petunia plugs about maybe two, maybe three weeks ago. And they, they must have at least doubled in size, at least actually, probably tripled now. Well, the, so they are in the greenhouse, but they are really looking good. Well, but the thing is, what, what all plants are doing now, Sean, most, most plants uh, are kind of automatically timed to grow as crazily quick as possible until the longest day. So that, but, but what they're kind of doing at the moment, all these plants, they're, they're kind of putting in what, what they call vegetative growth. So that means they're, they're growing as many leaves and they're producing yeah. as many stems as possible before the longest day. And then when they get to that point, that's the point when bang, that's when they start to really flower. Cause then that point they want to get into their reproductive stage. So that's why they're all growing. So, so and yeah. it's only going to get better cause each day, you know, the days are getting longer and longer. I've got one question for you though about this. Go on, I'm coming back. Are you going to mix or you're not going to mix? That is a good question, Adam. Um, I, mean, I, I have got these exact varieties in my greenhouse right now. Um, I think I'm going to mix, Adam. I think they work really well together. Yeah, I think they're going to mix. And we were saying um, yesterday, we, you know, we was, yeah, Stuart was just saying, he's just preempted what I was going to say. Yeah, because we were saying yesterday there are any kind of royal events coming up this year. We couldn't think specifically royal, but it, coincidentally, the Olympics are in Paris this year. Mm. And France, uh, Tricolore, is also red, white and blue. Of course. So you, you could still work for that as well if you wanted to. Um, 
but the, it, red, white, and blue just works, doesn't it? It, it, it does. looks stunning. Uh, and I think what's particularly good about this as well, where it, for me, it works even more, is if you say just had the red and the blue together, that's quite a major contrast. Yeah. And for some people, that might be too bit, much. But having that bit, bit of maybe white, a bit heavy as well. Yeah, and, and the white's almost like a bit of a referee. It's kind of just, yeah. you know, just stopping those colours clashing too much and just creating an overall really kind of harmonious look. Um, just quickly, you need to grow these on a little bit, keep them frost free. I always use, I mean, you can use, I never throw any pots away. So if you ever buy plants in pots, just keep them if you can see. They're really easy to store. Um, these ones are our bio pots, so they compost down, but literally just put that in a nine centimetre pot. Get, do obviously give your plug plants a water when they first arrive and then when you pot them up give them a good water and just keep them in a nice bright sunny place and you can put them outside in your hanging baskets your pots your containers as soon as there is no risk of frost and you've got a massive eight pound saving on those adam yeah and they are brilliant plants and another thing you can use sean as well egg cartons you could actually yeah, plant these yeah, in an egg carton yeah. um you know one in each little section of the egg carton They'll root through the actual carton and then don't even take them out the carton, just cut it up into six sections and plant it actually with, or as a challenge I'm coming pull up, you over here. plant no, it with you over here. the carton intact. No, pull, Adam, just show the strength. Oh, strength. You Are you ready? Oh, OK, so I'm just going to stand, am I? No, no, you're going to move oh, towards okay. the centre. OK. <laughs> That's like I'm going to move the I thought, you, I thought you were going to try and drag me across the room with it. Yeah, look, I mean, look, no, white no, knuckles. Look there are white knuckles there. This no. isn't, this isn't, yeah, these are really, really strong. So we shouldn't be doing that, are they? You might have an injury, Adam. <laughs> Um, yeah. oh. Ooh, oh. <laughs> that would be good. A double heart attack live on air. Oh, like, goodness dear. me, they, they died like pulling a bag apart or trying yeah, imagine. to. Imagine. Imagine it'd be massive on YouTube and TikTok, that wouldn't yeah, it? That... We'd, we'd, get, we'd have the biggest hits we've ever had, wouldn't we? We would. We we'd would. be viral. But sadly, we wouldn't be here to see <laughs> no. them. Um, but that is your free gift, and we are seriously just showing the strength of that. We probably shouldn't do that at home. Right. Um, very busy today. Thank you so much to uh, each and every one of you. And uh, apologies again. We had a few problems ordering yesterday. It's never happened before, actually. But uh, everything is fixed, fine and dandy today. And keep those comments coming in. Right. I keep looking at the 799 for our ornamental quins. This one, even at 1299, uh, RIP, amazing. But it's 799. And I am... Um, I definitely remember having one of these as a child in our first house in a little uh, village called Osberwick. Oh, uh, I love that name, Osberwick. Yeah. That sounds like something from a novel. It's a, it was a, lo it was a love, lovely yeah. little place. Um, but I remember red flowers, but I also remember the ornamental fruit and I thought it looked really good. I remember my mum saying, don't eat it, don't eat it, because you, you, you really don't want to. But the... Flowers on here are spectacular. Well, you were telling me yesterday that now you get lots of different colours yeah, with well, these. Yeah, you can. I mean, you, you, red was the traditional one. You can get a pure white form. This is the lovely orange form. And, and I've kind of just picked it up so you can just see how beautiful those flowers are. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it? And once this plant matures, I mean, you won't just have flowers just down at the base of the stem, all up the stems, mm. all over, absolutely covered. So I'm going to just... Oh, actually, just have a little look at the So, Adam, sizes. I remember this not get this sort of... Um, oh! oh. Wow! Oh, look at that. So this is already a good few years old, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is probably three, is. two or three years yeah. old already. This plant, um, and the good thing about Shinomalies is, you say you remember the fruit, Sean. Sure, I can remember where I used to live when I was a kid, and there was one of these that used to grow along a wall at the base of some flats, and it was really dry, and it was really horrible, awful place for a plant to grow. But I remember for year after year after year, every spring, this Shinomalies used to come in full flower. I didn't know what it was then. I mean, that was way before you could Google things and you know yeah. use your camera and stuff. I didn't know what it was, but every year it would have those quince fruits on it and I always found it really fascinating but long story short if you want a really easy easy super hardy shrub that flowers has that lovely ornamental fruit but for a shady position a north facing uh, position go for this yeah and do you know what now you've said that ours was sandwiched between a lilac tree and a forsythia I remember it very clearly so it was in the worst position it was like stuck in the middle but it did great they are they're growing clay soils heavy soils and they don't get particularly tall they're, they're kind of no. more of a scrambling yeah. kind of shrub um so they are a bit spiky by the way as well so uh, which is good for security yeah. if you um yeah if you want to use them as a defensive kind yeah. of shrub um 
Actually, this one doesn't seem quite so spiky. They are normally. Yeah, I mean, because it's got the younger foliage. I mean, yeah. once they get a little bit more mature, yeah, they will develop those spines. Oh, yeah, um, there's one, yeah. But quite often, you know, you, the, the police actually give suggestions these days of a sort of different shrubs you can grow, you know, for protection. Yeah. Oh. And um, Shinomalies is a good one to think about using. So that is your Shinomalies uh, Orange Trail, uh, and it is an ornamental quince. That's what it's known as well. Really great value. I do think that one is going to be one of the top sellers today. Now, something I'm really excited about uh, the syringa, the lilac that is coming up next. And the value here is amazing, but this is all about the breeding in here and this particular variety because, I mean, first of all, that looks so pretty and the fragrance is divine. But when we think of lilac, we do think of these huge trees, don't we? We do. That are seven metres in height. That are flowering right now, a, a, a month earlier than yeah. they, they should be, to be honest, but yeah. they're already in full bloom now. Um, but also lilac, Traditionally, many varieties, they only flower once, don't they? Yeah, I mean, the, the sort of the, the French lilac, as we call it, or the Syringa vulgaris types, yeah, they, they're all flowering now. They'll look magnificent for two or three weeks. And that'll be a lot worse. And that'll be it. That'll be it for this year. And then, yeah, they still have nice foliage, but no more flower. This is a microphylla type. This is what's known as Korean lilac. And this has a completely different habit. First of all, the flower heads are much more open than the kind of the tight heads of vulgaris types. And the good thing about these as well, they have this massive flowering session now. They keep popping out flowers all the way through the summer. And then in the autumn, they throw out another big burst of flower again, hence bloomerang, because the flowers keep coming back. They are equally as fragrant as normal lilacs, really super, super sweet fragrance. And in the autumn, they turn this really fabulous buttery yellow, the leaves, before they fall. And it is one of those plants, like so many we bring into you, it's bone hardy. It will grow in full sun. It will grow in sort of partial sun, uh, clay soils, poor soils, Good for chalky soils. Lilacs love chalky soils. So if you're struggling on chalk, it'll do really well there. Only gets to about the height of Sean and I. So it's never going to be a really huge, really tall shrub, but you can clip them down, shape them, trim them down if you want to. So if you want lilac for many, many years, that's easy to look after, that doesn't just flower for three or four weeks, but for four or five months, and it's fabulously fragrant, this is the type to go for, Sean. I, I think the value as well, two for 19.99. Great in pots because it's compact. Yep, you can grow this in a pot. And, and the name is really good, as we've been saying, bloomerang, because like a boomerang that comes back, the flowers keep coming back. Keep coming back. Which so, is amazing. Yeah, it's not just a, and again, just thinking uh, back in my head, I remember a lady I used to look after in Buckhurst Hill. She, she's gone now, love her. But um, she had one of these on a, a raised um, bank at the side of her garden. And it did flower all summer long. It used to start flowering in spring and all through the year, it was never without flower. Um, and I always remember walking past it on a warm day and you get this lovely waft oh. of sweet perfume. And you know what? It was on this bank and it was clay and it just got baked to death all summer. It was a really windy position as well, but it just, it was there, for, it'd been there for donkey's years oh, and it just kept going really happily. Um, so busy today, one for 14.99, two for 19.99. Uh, remember, postage is 6.99 per order, but if you spend over 40 pounds, your postage is absolutely free. Do you know what I'm going to do? Hello, Mum, if you're watching, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy two of these, one for me, one for my mum. Your mum will love that. Again, she, she's been banging on about having a lilac tree well, for ages, but she has, she's, got a, she's got a small country cottage garden, and that will be perfect. And again, you were saying about your mum, you know, her sight isn't as brilliant as it was, but you know, your mum can get the fragrance instead. Yeah. You know, your your mum's going to adore that. Hello, Sean's boss. Carol, she's Carol. Carol. Hi, Carol. She loves you. you know, oh, that's nice. Thanks, Carol. She does. Oh, I must meet you one day. I haven't met you yet, but it'd be great well, to meet, you. meet my, you one day. Well, we. You, we my, my mum comes to the garden club that I run, and Adam, and we've kind of agreed today that you're going to come and speak yeah, in November. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd yeah. be nice. And um, so, so you get to meet her there. Oh, it'd be lovely. I look forward to she'll that. She'll sit in the front row so she can see and hear you. <laughs> She's always there right at the front. But, um, yeah, you, I mean, my mum loves watching you, and Bex, of course, on the shows, and, and Peter when he does his VIP appearances, our head gardener. But um, two of those, I'm going to get one for me, one for my mum, but they'd look great in pots as well as beds and borders. Five to one, three, three, six, two. Right, we are, I mean, I, I think today it is exceptionally busy, but obviously people couldn't place orders easily yesterday. One of the most popular choices today 
the Petunia Saffinity. <laughs> I told you to just call it Picketty. <laughs> Should try this one again. There's too many words. Right. Petunia Saffinia. Burgundy, yellow, Picardy. Try to say that quickly. Um, should we just call it, what do you say? I, I, just, I just call it Picardy. Picardy Petunia. That's easier to say. Okay. <laughs> Petunia, Safinia, Burgundy, yellow, Picardy. That's good. I was reading it off the back, oh, to be good. honest. It's, it's written on the back of the thing. So I, I should have realised that. Yeah, yeah that yeah. would have made it easier. Yeah. But um, do you know what? Let's forget what it's called. Let's just have a look at it, because it is, it is absolutely stunning. And I'm sure all of our gardening friends watching, many of you will know petunias, will have grown petunias. But now and again, you see a variety that is just simply outstanding in its beauty, and this is. And I, I, I don't know how many I'm going to buy. I'm definitely going to go for the double-up deal. I'm definitely going for 12 of these. But I might be really naughty and just buy 24. I like, there's an area in our pub garden that I look after where there's four hanging baskets in a row. And I've got an image of four of these all together, all looking identical. That'll look good. But like we said yesterday, Sean, you're going to have to put a little label on there saying what they are, because it will be that sort of plant where everybody will keep asking. They'll, they'll come into the pub and they'll say, what's that petunia, Sean? What's that petunia? I haven't seen that petunia before. What's that petunia? Uh, because it is one of those plants that's going to be stand out. And, yeah. and it's weird because sometimes, you know, Sean and I, we've been gardening for donkey's years. And, and I always like to be really honest and upfront with people. Ordinarily for me, that mixture of yellow and red, it wouldn't do it for me. That would be something yeah, for I'm me I, I, I wouldn't particularly like. But there was just something about this when I saw it. When we walked in yesterday and we saw the, the picture cards, as soon as we both saw that, it was like, whoa. We, we, we really did. We, that, that's we, stunning. Yeah. That we, is really different. And I think it might be the tone of the yellow. It's just It just looks right and there's not too much of it. It's just a, a little edging, isn't it? It's perfect, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's almost like a bit of a sunset kind of thing really with the yeah. kind of the dark red sun you know and the little kind of yellow around the edge and of course they do have a little bit of a fragrance to them as well Safinias. now it's not ridiculously fragrant like lily the valley or something but they do have a, a soft kind of little sweet fragrance but of course you're getting that Safinia name behind these you know 30 years of of uh, world famous kind of Safinias, and the trading habit of these as well giving you those most amazing hanging baskets um, you, you're getting disease resistance with these but I think what you are getting with these is just something so novel and different and new and yeah. exciting I mean really. I, do, I, I think these all, are exhilarating we've all got to have those haven't we mm. and they are only uh, say if you double up 14.98 for 12 of those and let's be honest you are going to find cheaper petunias you are but they will not be saffinias they will not be this gorgeous gorgeous breeding and I think now and again in our gardens there's always your, what I call your crowd pleasers, the things that you'll grow easily year after year, but you just want highlights, don't you? You want certain things that really stand out. You said it yesterday, Adam. You want when friends and families come round to go, oh, wow. What is that? Oh, God, your basket looks amazing. Yeah. You know, that's what I want. That's rewarding, isn't it? Yeah. You, you feel like you've, you've, you've like, really yes. achieved it. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird, again, over the years, when, I, when we've done Chelsea Gardens, there's, every year there's always one plant where almost everybody will ask you what that plant yeah. is because it's just a, a kind of a standout plant that people haven't really seen before. It's a bit different. And this is what this will be. And, and I'll tell you what will be really exciting for this. It, it's just going to be the anticipation, is it, of waiting yeah. for the first flowers to start open. And what I will say, there's always a few plants at the nursery. And Peter and his team, they're really good at saying, right, I, I think we're going to need... 10,000 of those this year, we'll need 2,000 of those, you get the idea. But there's always one or two plants that sell out super quick and we can't get any more. I think this could be one of them. Because you've got to bear in mind, we've got a massive uh, business just on our website. There's a big mail order business with the Garden. So don't just think, oh, well, I'm, I'm watching the Garden TV show and, you know, there might be, I don't know, a few... I think we get, we get several hundred watching and a lot of people stream later, but that could be one of the first of our summer bedding to not be available in the near future. I think it's going to be really popular. 401555. So I better get my order in for those. What yeah, else there'll be a run on them, definitely. So, yeah. So uh, also, you are adoring our uh, euphorbias. Now, I wandered around my garden this morning and I saw my euphorbias, and, and they're looking good. So, yeah, there's two there. Now, I should have actually, ideally, I think I should have trimmed them back last year. So I've got two there, but I've got a really big one as well. Um, strawberries are also popular today. 
<laughs> There's an Andy Storm is that coming in uh, that we're going to share a bit later. Um, but yeah, I've got a few euphorbies in my garden. That's two of them. We've got the big ones, Stu. Yeah. Oh, look at that that's one. That's a good one. That's the mellifera, isn't it? Euphorbia yes. mellifera, or the We're, honey honey bush, I think, or honey, yeah, yeah honey but, euphorbia. And I love it, Adam, but I don't think it's quite as spectacular as a black pearl today. Do you? Let's be honest. Uh, no, no, I mean, this this really is dramatic. This, uh, I, I was um, saying the other day about, I remember when I was a kid, there used to be uh, a sci-fi programme called Lost in Space. And it was a really cheesy that. kind yeah. of programme and everything was all plastic and wobbled. But, I remember, and, yeah. and they used to create the most bizarre kind of plants because they, obviously they'd gone to some sort of you know, planet out in the beyond wherever. And this kind of reminds me of one of those kind of plants. It's yes. like Avatar almost. It's just, yeah. un, it's like otherworldly, isn't it? It's so sort of different and unusual. Um, and that is the great thing about euphorbias. Euphorbias are quite an unusual plant in that they almost have as many foliage colours as they do flower colours. I mean, I've seen euphorbias with red leaves, orange leaves, pink yeah. leaves. The sort of the little Merlot that we've, you know, we do has got the chocolatey coloured leaves. So, you know, you, the, the contrast in leaf colour is amazing. But even within an individual plant, the ones here, this black pearl, first of all, it's got red stems at the base, which are, which are quite exquisite. I think that's so unusual. And then they kind of blend into the green. And then, of course, you've got the flower, and the flowers are surrounded by something called bracts, which are sort of, you know, the, the, sort of the green things around the edge are actually bracts. The true flower is, is kind of in, in the middle, middle there, yeah. the, the black bit in the middle. But boy, oh boy, I mean, this just looks stunning, doesn't it? So different and unusual. And, um, and I, I think euphorbias look really good in groups, but equally they can just be, be fine amongst other plants in your beds and borders. But they are evergreen as well, so they look good all year round. They, they are very easy. I mean, they, they will put with many different conditions, won't they? Yeah, the only, the only sort of thing they absolutely hate is really, really wet soil. Yeah, they, they, they will just, like they will boggy, just no, they? really no. wet soil, they'll just rot off, they'll, they won't survive. But at the other end of the scale, they will do well in ridiculously dry soil. At work, I've seen these seed about, and I've seen them come up in little crevices between paving stones. I've seen them find a little um, nook in a wall somewhere, and they've rooted into a wall. And you think, how on earth Amazing. are you sustaining yourself? But they will grow and they get really deep roots so they, they you know they really establish themselves well um, and they're frost resistant they're wind resistant they're great coastal plants as well if you've got a seaside garden yeah. or a windy well, garden so they do well in mine and it's quite exposed mm. that, that, that corner you saw you get really strong winds uh, we are doing a double up deal on those today so 9.99 but for an extra two pounds you can go for two of those they are pretty amazing those and I really mean that five six one two three five they're also really popular to Today has been our Dianthus, the, the, gar the Garden Pleasure collection. Uh, but we know these as pinks. And well, I'm, I'm going to just do something, Sean. I'm going to pass you this because I think if you actually kind of, um, you know, put that in between um, the sort of the pinks, you, you could, you know, they would be great yeah. because they, they, they sort of would grow in the same place, the same area. And they're going to be. Again, you're going to get that foliage all year round. It, yeah, well, I that's mean, going to go at the back, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that get bigger. I mean, you say you've got a gravel area, for example, you could actually just plant that euphorbia on its own, and then you could underplant with the pinks underneath the euphorbia Great idea. because the euphorbia will get sort of about sort of 12 18 inches tall and it's got a nice open habit and the pinks and euphorbia love exactly the same type of position they yeah. love full sun they love acute drainage they both do well on really poor soils they're both evergreen they both flower so if you're thinking today about doing a little combo of two different plants and you, you want plants that, that love similar kind of areas this would be fantastic because the dianthus have got that wonderful glaucousy blue evergreen foliage that looks good all the year through. They form like little mats or little carpets of foliage and then you get that explosion of different flowers, six different varieties here with slightly different flower texture, uh, different sort of colour mixes on the flowers but all of them having absolutely adorable fragrance. And the price we've got on these today, as you probably noticed, 12 plug plants for 10.49. Now the Deantas are fully winter hardy, so you can plant these out straight away. It's not like some of the bedding that we've got, like the petunias and the busy lizzies, fully winter hardy. And actually, although we normally say grow them on, 
they're, they're big enough now, I would say, to go straight in the ground. Yeah, these can go straight out, Sean. They're, they're bone tough and sort of, you know, dianthus and pinks, that, you know, a, a lot of them kind of come from parts of the world originally that's very sort of mountainous or alpine areas. So they're used to being baked yeah. in the summer. They're used to having really cold winters. And that is just such a super healthy little plant. Yeah. And it's already been like, like pinched out in the centre, so it's already getting lots of nice side shoots. And you will get lots of lovely flowers this year. You will get flowers this year. But again, another top tip for, uh, for these as well is don't make these compete with anything else. If you're going to plant these pinks, keep them on their own where they've got maximum amount of light coming in all the way around. Don't you know, let them get overshadowed by other plants because then if they get overshadowed, where they get shadowy, they'll go a bit yellow and a yeah. bit kind of weak. So if you know, you've got somewhere that's um, super sunny, and really poor soil and you struggle to get other things to flower and grow there, put these pinks in, they will love it, they will go mad. And I, I said um, earlier to, to Adam that my, my uh, gran used to have dianthus and actually, and they did amazingly well and they were all down the front of her garden, either side of the path, but they got full sun and she actually had sandy soil so they loved it they love it yeah, yeah. and chalk they're great for chalky yeah. soil so if you, if you struggle to get something to do well on chalk they absolutely adore chalk god but it, um, they're amazing things right really quickly i don't know where the time's going to they've got so much happening but a lot of you are putting together quite big baskets today i mean look, let's be honest the sun's out isn't it the sun's shining it's April. This is the time to get your garden sorted. And if you need compost, we have got our best selling U Garden products right now. It is our premium professional compost. You get two 50 litre bags for $24.98. Most of you are discount club members, so you get £2.50 off. And if you only want to buy a compost, or maybe you've already bought your plants. I know you're thinking, oh, I forgot to get my compost. Oh, I might need a bit more compost. You can place a second order. Remember, postage is free, and you will get another free gift. And your free gift with every order today. A few of you have been doing this. You've been placing separate orders for compost. You just need to use the code YGTV 1524 and you will get another of our heavy duty grow bags absolutely free. We do sell these for 4 99 and they are brilliant, not just for growing fruit in, fruit trees, potatoes, tomatoes, strawberries, raspberries. You've got drainage holes in there, but they're really good just as a general purpose handy bag. A bag that you can really put decent weight in. Decent weight, Sean, and also because of that probably propylene as well, they're not going to rust. Uh, well, they're not going to rust. They're, they're not, not going to rust. They're not no. going to rot or corrode, are they? They're, so, they're yeah, they're going to last, well, donkey's years, yeah. basically. They're brilliant. I, it, it took me a while to actually do anything with them apart from grow things in them. So I use them as grow bags to start with. And then I suddenly realised that they're just a great bag. So you, the more of these you have, the more you'll use them. And have a couple in the car, so when you're shopping and you've got some really heavy stuff, they're superb. We're talking bottles of, of, <laughs> of wine, um, cans of beer, things like that are really heavy, but also just things like cat litter, cans of food. Kids' toys. Yeah. You know, you, you kids like, got their toys out in the living room, whatever. You know, you, got, oh, I see, just for tidying up. Yeah, you tidying mean? up, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you've got three yeah. tons of Lego. Yeah. You can just put all the Lego yeah. in there. Uh, you know, any, anything kind of like that, really. Yeah. And uh, just general storage. They're superb, mm. they really are. And you get one of those free with every separate order today. Right, going to move on to our compost. Um, God, oh, I love this. I genuinely love this compost, but I think pretty much anyone that's ever used it and tried it falls in love with it. They do, because it is fantastic compost. And while you've you know, you kind of been talking to the folk at home, um, <coughs> I've been, what I've been doing, actually, Sean, is oh. just squashing this ball of compost up. And I've, I've sort of managed to compact it just about. But you know what? It's such a beautiful compost, because you literally just really, really softly do that. And it again, wow. it, it just falls apart. It crumbles. I mean, you know, this doesn't the stay. Texture's amazing, the texture is amazing. The texture is fabulous, and the reason for that is the elements in that compost. Now, I need to say this is a hugely peat reduced, reduced compost, um, which is really, really important. That's good to know. Um, 
but also what we've got in this is composted wood fiber as well and um, bark and that actually keeps the compost really nice and open so although I was trying to compact it to become a solid mass it doesn't want to be it will all always stay nice and open that lets the roots penetrate it lets the air get down into the soil it lets the um, the moisture percolate through but and actually particularly with young plants when you are growing plug plants and seedlings those young delicate roots they need access to everything as easy as possible don't they? yeah they do and uh, I mean again I gave an example yesterday I remember a few years ago buying a soil based seed compost and I put my seeds in that and then I watered it and it oh. Yeah. And then the, the sort of the soil dried out on the top in the greenhouse and it, it was like kind of one of those, uh, you know, when they see the programs in Africa where the lake dries up and it's just that solid crust on top and it's like concrete. That's, that's what happened yeah. kind of on top of this seed tray and the poor little seeds, they oh. couldn't get through. They were just trapped under this, this solid soil. This always remains so open, so soft. You've got slow release fertilizer in here, going to feed your plants up to six months. You've got a wetting agent that means this compost wants to absorb moisture it's not going to repel the moisture it actually wants to suck the moisture in also it's pH balanced so it's not too acidic it's not too alkaline so that gives you the biggest range of plants that you can grow in this and something else um, I didn't realize if you want a huge amount of this apparently we do bulk deliveries yeah this using well, to call which, our customer service uh, if you call them uh, on 0844 502 0050 if you need a massive amount of this maybe you're filling up some yeah huge new beds that you've had. Well, you're like, you're a gardener like me and you've got a gardening, you know, big yeah. gardening job for a customer. You, you, you want to use the best compost to put in those new beds and boards and stuff. Brilliant. Yeah. I know when I was uh, sorting out my new garden, because it was uh, where you saw it was a building site, um, I, could, I should have probably bought this in bulk then. I kept buying it in bits and pieces, but I could have probably got a better discount. Just quickly, I'm going to talk about our price, because we do not claim to be the cheapest. We do claim and believe to be the best. But actually, you look and you think twenty four ninety eight. Then you've got to bear in mind, you've got free delivery, and that is important because buying compost is an absolute. It's it's not enjoyable. It's quite a, quite a palaver, isn't it? You know, get parking somewhere, getting the trolley, going outside, getting the compost bag, reaching up, putting them on your trolley, discovering you've picked the ripped one and it's all coming <sighs> out. That's so annoying. Really annoying. Then you get to check out. There's a long queue. Then. They come and scan it, but the barcode's underneath, so you've got to turn the compost over and get the barcode. Then wheel the trolley out, get the compost off the trolley, into the car, and do it all again the other end. Catch it on the boot catch on the way out, oh, put a big rip down the yeah, bag. Yeah, it's just not easy. So we actually deliver it free of charge, but also club members, and most of your club members, you save £2.50, so you get it for twenty two forty eight. Then you do get your free gift, and we do sell the grow bags for four ninety nine. So actually, when you start breaking down the cost if you take 4.99 off 2248 suddenly your price is less than 17 pounds for 100 litres yeah and 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 for a, a premium compost like this as well I mean yeah it might be slightly better than kind of your average compost but the thing is you know the results you get from this are just going to be so 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 much more fantastic it's worth that extra investment and and it's like a lot of things in life isn't it as well you, you all know generally you get what you pay for and you, you do generally in life yeah, yeah. There's a, that's a good expression and I've got and I won't I won't name check them but one of my relatives will never use a decent compost and always complains that her plants and pots are no good. And what often happens with, with her plants and containers, they go over very quickly. Yeah, because there's... Because they don't have the slow release fertiliser. No. They do dry out. Yeah. And, and it's so mad. But the amount of times that um, this relative says, oh, my hanging baskets are done this year. And it's like, you know, mid-July, say, or end of July. So many reasons to go for this. And just while I'm talking, sorry, uh, uh, was at the garden club last night and, and one of my friends there, she bought a composter, a hot composter, that's oh, supposed to make I, it really quickly. I know them things, yes, um, yeah. She's had nothing but trouble and it's cost her a fortune. They're like a washing machine kind of shape yeah. thing, aren't they? With all that kind of, yeah. It's cost her a fortune. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're very good when you crack it, but it's, she's, she's just a disaster after disaster. And she's like, but it's cost me this amount of money and I've spent, I've spent nine months trying to get compost and she still hasn't got any, basically. So, um, 
we've got it here. It, it, we do believe it's to be, to, it is the best, and you can get it at that brilliant price today as well. Right, and we've got loads still to come, haven't we? Yeah, we have, indeed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. just a well, we've, we've got, got we, oleanders. We could do a swap over them and bring yeah. you some even you know, newer things, some more fantastic things. We've still got things like kiwis coming up. We have got. What else we got? Let's have, let's have a little look I, down there. Uh, oh, we've got a fabulous, um, gorgeous Deutzia and a fantastic hydrangea as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, an amazing hydrangea. Yeah, it's amazing. So and it's got really gorgeous variegated leaves as well. So loads still to come. Keep uh, messaging, by the way, Adam. And I, we want to hear from you. You know we love it when you message in a new email. It makes our day, doesn't it, Adam? It does because it, kind of, it knows yeah. that you know. It lets us know that you're as passionate as we yeah. are, so and we can share that yeah the joy together. Message in and say how handsome we look today. That that really make our day. So like to tell, you can take you can actually you know tell the odd white line. We'll be happy, won't we? Adam? So, yeah. We, we actually look like. You remember those fruit salads you used to buy when you was a kid? They had blackjacks and fruit salads, oh, didn't they? Yeah, we, we do like we, a fruit we, salad. We look like we? one of those fruit salads. Yeah. <laughs> Or rhubarb and custard. Remember the rhubarb and custard I sweets? Love that. Yeah. yeah, I love I think them. They're still going out there. Yeah, I should think so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, loads still to come up here on New Garden TV. But let's remind you of some of the great plants we've seen so far this uh, wonderful Thursday morning. Um, don't forget if you want if you want your compost, the details on the screen for your compost there. One hundred one two five. At £24.95. Write them down, Thurs. You've absolutely loved these today. They've been really, really popular. The price is amazing. I mean, they are on offer, and don't forget, all of our offers are only for a limited time. And what these are, it's a wonderful collection. You get six varieties, two of each. They love full sun, they just need well drained soil, but they're really not fussy. They form lovely clumps. They are not massive, so front of a border, but over the years the clumps get bigger and bigger, but they will flower all summer long with very little effort. 12 plugs, six colours, two of each, at just 10 pounds and 49 pence. Love those, can't go wrong with those. Right, really, really popular. In fact, has this been the most popular item? Oh, we're so pleased. Yeah, I think this is gonna be one of our first bedding plants to sell out this season. There's always one or two that suddenly take us by surprise and you've absolutely loved these. I will be buying mine today and it is the Petunia Sophinia Burgundy Yellow Picote. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I got it right that time. Uh, you can go for 9 9 tonight. I'm pretty sure nearly everyone has doubled up. I'm even thinking of quadrupling up. But um, these will really, really turn heads. This summer in hanging baskets, in pots, they are going to look divine. Everything works with these. Now, they are Sophinia. Sophinia is a brand uh, for 30 years now, and they're known to really bring us outstanding performing petunias that trail and trail that are a lot more resilient and resistant. But this variety is just breathtaking. Really busy. I would get those in your basket today. 401555. Then one of my really favourite recent discoveries in my garden, hardy geraniums. I know they've been around for years, but there's just so many better varieties now. And this is a prime example. Now it's a little bit more upright than some of the hardy geraniums, like Rosanne, for example. So it grows to about 60 centimetres. You've got this wonderful burgundy foliage contrasting with the lilac and the purple flowers. It is divine, this one. It will come back year after year. It will be a plant that doesn't need too much care and attention. These are really quite drought tolerant, particularly when established. Sun apart shade. They'll die down during the winter months, they are herbaceous, but they will come back year after year after year. 56986 for the hardy geranium storm cloud. Now also you have loved our euphorbia, and this one is known as black pearl. And Euphorbias in general, they come in so many different colours now when it comes to the foliage, but the flowers on here are rather magnificent. They are, they are pretty much jet black, you know. They really are, and there are very few jet black plants you actually find in nature. So what do you need to know about these? They are evergreen, they are totally winter hardy, they pretty much survive everywhere, so sunny spots, exposed spots, coastal, um, 
It's part shade. The only thing that they need to avoid is really wet soil. So if you've got maybe clay soil, if you've got heavy, wet, cold soil, these do need to avoid that. But everything else, absolutely fine. 561, 235 for the Euphorbia Black Pearl. Now, something else, uh, I mean, I've got a massive list today. It's one of my biggest lists ever, actually. But we've got the April Sun. Oh, my word, I look. Now, I, I, I did not know this one um, that well at all. So uh, it's really nice to learn about this today. And it is the Helemium April Sun. So it is fully winter hardy. Comes with our lifetime guarantee. It flowers, it's called April Sun because you get the flowers predominantly in April time, and you get masses of them. Now this one loves to bake, so the sunniest spot, the better. It can be grown very successfully in a pot. It's very easy to look after. It, it um, says evergreen as well, but the sunnier, the better. Just let this bake in as much sun as possible. 510840. Flowers in April time, but also will extend that through to May and June. Great in a pot. And that is only $14.99 today. Then what else have we got for you? Right, the honeyberry, you've loved this one as well. So, the most delicious fruit, they're high in antioxidants, dark skinned. It's from the honeysuckle uh, family. It's a lonicera, but these are the fruits that it will produce. And you're getting really big plants today in the 1.7 litre pots. They are self-fertile, but if you have a pair of these, a double up, you are very, very likely to get so much more fruit. And we are looking at two for 40 pounds and 98 pence. Grows to about four to six feet when fully mature, 310-070. Then also just staying with Grow Your Own, would you love cherries? Well, you can actually grow cherries in your garden, but you don't need a tree because this is a bush. That's what it looks like. And actually the size that you're getting in the three litre pot, it will be covered in blossom. You may well get quite a decent crop in the first year because these are not bare roots, they're already in three litre pots, but you'll get more and more for maybe up to 25 years or so with these delicious homegrown cherries in your garden. 19.99 discount club price is only 17.99, 300, at 76. Then we brought you the giant Colossus strawberries. Now, these are Big strawberries, you can see there. I mean, they they really are giants of strawberries, but do not think that is gonna make them not tasty. There is no compromise on taste. So this is about big flavors, big strawberries. They are jumbo plugs, so they are really well established right now. Some of ours are even flowering. Uh, Andy, hello Andy, he just sent us in this picture. His are in the ground already or in the pots, I should say. He's got them in the 30 litre heavy duty pots and a perfect home for those right now. And it looks like he's gonna get quite a good crop in his very first year. 320.074 for the Strawberry Colossus 12 Jumbo Plugs. And then we brought you that really cute ornamental quince, the Kia Nobles. Now, I can honestly say we had one of these as a child but it was red. But I do remember it, it just grew so easily. So it, do, it, it, it doesn't need a lot of care and attention. You, it, it tends to grow sidewards as well as upwards, so it kind of meanders in between. We'll actually do well, really well in, in part shade as well. And that is 510957, it's only 799 as well. And it does produce, or, produce ornamental fruits as well. Then I love I love these. These are also my list today. The Syringa, it's a lilac, but it's called the Blue Meringue. Now it's a lot more compact than lilac trees. So it's only gonna grow uh, to one and a half, two meters. You can grow them in pots as well. But the great thing is it flowers, not just once, the flowers keep coming back like a boomerang. So flowers in the spring, flowers in the autumn, and you may well get flowers in between as well. And one of those for $14.99, but for an extra fiver, you get two. And then one more before we bring in some new items, the Dacentra. 
Spectabilis Alba, which is this gorgeous perennial. So this one, I love what Adam said about it. It fills in that gap, so it flowers now. So when a lot of your herbaceous perennials are just coming back to life, your lupins, your poppies, uh, your digitalis, your foxgloves, hollyhocks, all your favorite perennials are still probably just beginning to show signs of life and your bulbs have probably gone over. These fill in the gap. So these produce the most gorgeous, almost like a heart-shaped flower there at this time of the year. And we are doing an amazing triplet deal. We get three of those for £12.98. Now we've got an amazing show today with uh, Adam Wilcott. He's my uh, friend in the pot and shed today. And we've actually got coming up now the most incredible hydrangea. And I'll be honest, Adam, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, I've got the right one there, because it didn't, doesn't really look like hydrangea, does it? It is really I mean, unusual, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when it flowers, yes, but when you just see the foliage. At the moment, it, it's kind of one of those shots where the, the foliage colour is almost mimicking the colour of the flowers on there. Yes. Um, and you've got like three lots of colour on that foliage. You've got the kind of silvery white, you've got the pink, and then you've got the green in the middle. And then as those leaves mature, they will become more green in the centre and then white round the edge with just a little perhaps fringe of pink. This is a really compact hydrangea as well, only gets about 60 centimetres tall. So absolutely fantastic for a pot, which is really, really good. Yeah, again, that is small for hydrangeas, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so even if you're in a small space, a small balcony somewhere, tiny little garden, you can still grow this hydrangea. It's really, really hardy. And when it flowers, it has these magnificent kind of pink flowers, pinky white flowers. But if you grow it on an acid soil, so if you wanted to kind of experiment with this, if you wanted to grow this in a pot and you got yourself some ericaceous compost, you can turn it from being pink to being blue. So you can change the flower yeah. colour of this depending... But that is the interesting things with hydrangeas, depending on the on soil On the pH, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if the soil is acidic, so for example, you know, acidic soil is soils where magnolias, rhododendrons, azaleas do really, really well, you can get the flowers to turn blue. If your soil's alkaline, which is sort of soils where lilacs and pinks and things grow, then it will be pink. And if it's kind of towards neutral, sometimes you can get like a, a kind of a mishmash of, 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 of kind of yeah. colours as well. So, yeah, they're quite unusual. Yeah. They change their flower colour. Can we just say that if you put it in acid soil and you don't, you don't, like, you don't like what it turns into, don't blame Adam. No, or, no. or just take it and put it in the garden with the alkaline soil. Actually, it'll go, go back, back to be pink. Yeah, actually, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you, you know, you can, it's, it's kind of, you've heard of shapeshifters. This is a colour shift. Shifter, you know, depending on, on kind of where you plant it. But I mean, it really is a super magnificent hydrangea because even when it's not flowering, and by the way, this is what we're sending out to you. So yours will flower for you definitely this year. Almost yeah, every stem on this... this plant has got flower buds on. So you know, you're gonna get flower on this this year. And even without the flower, the foliage colour is magnificent on this, isn't it? I mean, sometimes uh, sometimes foliage on hydrangeas can be um, just ordinary. I mean, you think, again, Sean, we were saying earlier on when we were kids about the mop head hydrangeas, and we kind of remembering those ones, again, were either blue or pink. Um, and they were quite magnificent. But, but that is all we had, wasn't that's it? That's all really? we had. And the leaves on those were really kind of just very, um, very plain green, actually. They were, you know, not sort of uh, magnificent. There was nothing really outstanding about out those hydrangea leaves but you know this one what they've done with this one is they've actually bred it in such a way that the leaves are as attractive and as brilliant as the actual flowers so you get in those you know hues of pink those sort of greens those sort of colors in the actual leaves and then you're getting the colors in those flowers as well looking absolutely fantastic I mean, and magnificent and know, on a lots, compact lots plant. of orders have already gone through for that Adam um, but it's such an unusual hydrangea. And the breeding, as we're saying, is incredible. The past like several years, I'm, there's a place in Derby, it's a whole garden full of hydrangeas. It's just a, a public space and, um, in Derby. And um, I was just gobsmacked to walk around there last year. And I mean, so many different colours and different shapes of hydrangea. It's magical. But that is one of the most unusual that I've ever seen, Yeah, actually. it is unusual. And I think I'm right in saying at the Chelsea Flower Show in 2023, I think it was the runner-up 
to the uh, plant of the year. So what is it? yeah, so it's, it's a really loved plant. And I, wonder, I, think, I wonder what beat it. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it also has the RHS uh, Award of Garden Merit as yes. well. So again, that's something that only plants that achieve the, the greatest standards get. But yeah, isn't it really brilliant when you get to the point with a plant where you're not just relying on flower colour, even you know when this isn't flowering the leaves still look absolutely amazing. Yeah. In fact, there's um, an Acer out there, some of you might have it, there's an Acer out there called Acer Nagundo Flamingo, and that has very similar leaves. It has these kind of green and pink and creamy coloured leaves. So if you want a hydrangea that's got everything, go for this yeah. one. Yeah, well, so order's already going through for that one. 511-522. Now, we've also got the Beely coming up next called Trail Away. And we do lots of different sides of plug plants here at Garden. We do garden ready we do jumbo plugs but the most affordable that we do are the pro plugs and I'm just going to show you, you actually get 60 of these what I tend to do to, to get them out carefully because you do have to be a little bit careful with these when you get them out some people squeeze them out but I tend to get a, a, a little stick and just push from the bottom and that tends to just bring them out that little bit more easily but I want to show you, because we were talking about growing, you can grow lobelia from seed, but my word, it's a lot of effort. All the work's been done. There are several actual seeds in here, aren't there, Adam, you can see. So you're going to get, yeah, you're multi seeded So automatically in that one plug, Sean, you're pretty much guaranteed to get at least two or three different colours just from that one yeah. little plug. Now that is a really impressive plug plant. <laughs> it really is. And you get 60, they work out 20 pence each. Let's get this in perspective, 20 pence each. And again, all you need to do is pop that in. It could be that you've got nine centimeter pots. It could be that you've just got yogurt pots. It could be that you've got maybe egg cartons. Egg cartons, toilet you, roll holders. Yeah, kind of whatever egg, you've got. Anything really. But just grow them on for the next four weeks or so, frost free and then you're going to have magnificent lobelia and you'll have saved a fortune. And I always think that trailing lobelia, it fills in the gaps in pots and baskets magnificently. But something that I've never done, actually Bex, uh, my gardening buddy here did last year, she did whole pots of trailing lobelia and it can work just a mass as well, can't it? It can look fantastic because you remember, again, Sean, you know, we were saying when we were kids, we just remember lobelia being blue. It was just that it dark was. blue colour. It was. And you had your white alisum, you had your marigolds. Oh, and then, so right. Then you had your red um, salvias along that, the back, in a all in dead straight lines going down the side of the you, borders. Do you know what? That's exactly what we had. That's exactly what we yeah. used to do. Whereas now, You've got this incredible mix of colour of lobelia here. So you've got this kind of, you know, this sort of jewel coloured mix, if you like, of all these different fabulous colours that's just going to look glorious all summer long. And all you do with lobelia is plant it and leave it. And obviously, if it's in a pot or a basket, you water it, feed it occasionally. But there's no deadheading, there's no clipping, there's no tidying. And they just flower all the way through summer right into the autumn. Now occasionally, gorgeous. if mine's ever got a little bit leggy, I have sometimes trimmed it back. You can do that. You can do it with petunias as well, and it gives them a new kind lease of lease of life. Yeah. Only sometimes if I've underwatered, underfed, and they're just got a little bit straggly. You know, like when you need a haircut, and it's all. Um, I have sometimes just trimmed them back a bit, and they've really got that second burst. And I'll tell you, a really good time to do that. If you're going to go on holiday for two weeks, just do it before you go. That's a great yeah, idea. Tr trim the petunias back on your hanging baskets. Give them a good drink before you go, and then while you're away, they'll start to reshoot and you're not yeah. sitting for two weeks waiting for them to, to come great back. Idea. Yeah. Great idea. Right, 20 pence a plant on those. Best value we do, they're pro plugs and you get all of those amazing colours with the Lobelia trailer wear. Now we're going to move on to this little beauty next. It's another, this is another super compact plant. Deutzias, again, uh, you know, we were talking about lilacs earlier on and the ordinary lilacs can get huge. I mean, they make small sort of trees and they take up a lot of space. And some of you that might have grown Deutzias before now, they can get 10, 12, 14 foot high and form great big thickets, like, almost like bamboo stem-like thickets where they grow up. This is a super, super compact one. It's only going to get to about 40 to 60 centimetres. You can grow this in that a pot. That is amazing for Deutzias, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. yeah. So you can grow this in the small garden the smallest space a balcony three floors up and you can enjoy these wonderful flowers these sort of bi-colored flowers which by the way this is the plant this is what we're sending out to you. Oh, it's a really good size it, already, it's a good it? size but yeah it's already smothered in flower buds so it's not like you've got to wait till next year to get flowers oh, on wow. this these are the quality of the plants so within another three or four weeks 
the picture you see behind will become the reality on your plant because the buds are there. Um, and that's gonna look stunning. It's gonna flower for a good three or four or five weeks. It's gonna look glorious for that amount of time. For the first two or three years, don't even worry about pruning it. Just, just let it do its thing. In the third or fourth year, what you can do is each spring is perhaps take out a third of the really old wiry kind of woody stems just open the center of it up a little bit and that will allow for new shoots to come through that will then give you flower the following year so really easy to look after super hardy no worries about frost so again like you've that. got your uh, lifetime, your lifetime guarantee. guarantee not particularly fussed about soils it will grow in most soils um, sandy soils clay soils uh, yeah they're just really robust all round of plants and just kind of whizzing through my customers gardens in my head from over the years I, I can I can just remember so, Deutzias growing in all sorts of different gardens and different places so easy this is what I love about working with Adam so I, I can tell you about the gardens I've had but I've only really ever looked after my own garden my mum garden and the pub garden but your repertoire for want of a better word all the different gardens you've managed to maintain over the years you've seen it all haven't you well do you know like you used to have those things in the olden days on your desk with cards and they used to flick around yeah that's kind yeah. of my brain goes when i'm thinking about customers yeah. gardens i'm flicking through to think where did i see where, where, where was that door where was that door i think it's wonderful live it really is so uh, that one is a really compact variety it was at 60 centimeters just 11 99 you got a six uh, sorry nine pounds saving of that no you haven't do you know what? my math is not be good you got an eight pound saving third time lucky right gms <laughs> gms yeah it's on the screen there you go uh gms are next um and i have grown gms actually for many many years and my mum's grown gms and i, I what i love about gms I, I love the hot colors that you often get you often see gms don't you in in reds and yellows and oranges mm. but what is particularly nice about this one it's a double isn't it's a it? double yeah and it's a tangerine kind of reddish tangerine colors it's, it's like a mixture of colors in that one flower i mean it's absolutely yeah let me just turn it around it's been a bit camera shy yeah is it someone no oh, there you go look at that oh, our camera's hell. found you gorgeous is, and again you're is gonna that? get three of these in nine cents with pots but Look at all of the, the flowers that are coming through. Now, we mentioned earlier that these would go really, really well in our Torino pots. And just to show you, because you get three of these, and you can actually get three of the pots for the price of one. But one of those in there would be very happy. For Look at that contrast. Uh, yeah, because you, you've Do, got that does lovely... Does that work? It does, because you've got that gorgeous copper colour, haven't you, of the pot, Sean? And yeah. you've got those lovely kind of orangey tangerine colours. That is stunning. That is so, so I pretty. I think that is really going to work. And that would live in there quite happily. Yeah, probably for forever. Years. Yeah, probably yeah. For, for always. Actually, you're right, as long as you sort of, like, fed it... And kept and it watered. Kept it watered. Um, and yeah. So, for instance, if um, you've got a shady garden, a shady space, and you want a little bit of colour, they're absolutely great. GMs don't mind shade, but they also grow equally well in full sun. I can, again, I can think of a garden that I look after on the outskirts of Stortford. They've got two huge, great big hot borders, and that's very sunny, and they've got GMs right at the front. Yeah. But then I can think of planting schemes I've done where I've wanted perennials for sort of a dappled shade, coolish area. And I always go for GMs because they're, they're sort of same family as buttercups, so they don't mind kind of moist, meadowy land, kind of edge of woodland, cool kind of places as I well. Mean, again, it's, it's just one of those really easy ones that come back year after mm. year after year. Um, Fully hardy, bone hardy, uh, get through every winter, no, no problem at all. How much do they die down? Because mine. The ones I've got in my garden, they didn't seem to die down fully. They, they don't disappear completely. What ha tends to happen is the leaves keep going in roughly into the autumn and then they get a little bit brown and they, yeah. ju they just sort of just fall down onto the ground, but they don't disappear completely. So you always know where they are. And then in the springtime, before they really start get going again, you can just trim off the old crispy yeah. sort of brown leaves and you already see the little all kind of... that new lovely yeah, growth. New lovely yeah, new lovely growth underneath. Let that come through. And that's that's all you've got to do with these. And they eventually form sort of a little, a little clump, a little carpet and you can lift and divide these eventually as well and make them into more plants but honestly i love them i think they're just absolute winners in the garden but this particular variety the flames of passion is gorgeous with that double and say so would work really well with the, the plants which is a buy one get two free today as well really busy lots of new uh, lots of new views as well so thank you if you are new uh, my name's Sean Ryan, and this is the fabulous Adam Woolcott. Uh, multi award winning, and I really mean that. Several uh, gold, silver, silver guild medals at Chelsea, him and his partner John. But I think, and I love that about you, Adam. 
but I also love the fact that you've maintained and looked after all of these hundreds of gardens for many, many years. So your knowledge is amazing, it really is. And if you want to be part of the show today, you can message us at YGTV at yougarden.com. If you uh, want to follow us on social media, it's adam.woolcott. Uh, I'm Sean Ryan, presenter and plant man, but we would love you to be part of our gardening community. But we've got there. Uh, Facebook is what I normally do things on, uh, but of course a little bit on Instagram as well. You're mostly Instagram, aren't you? It's, yeah, Instagram and TikTok. Yes. Mm. But yeah, we'd love you to, to follow us and of course follow you garden. Let's move on there to a wonderful, truly Mediterranean plant. And this is a buy one, get one absolutely free. And these are the gorgeous shades of pinks, oleanders. Now on our website, 29.99 for one, two for 54.98. So what you need to do, because you're watching the, the live stream of YGTV, put one in your basket, and as long as that offer code is in there, YGTV1524, you'll get a free one. You'll also get free postage, because we've spent over 40 pounds, we've got free delivery now. So we've also got our Euphorbia in there, the Black Pearl, we've got our Pinks in there, we've got our free gift, you get that free with every single order, your grow bag, which is also a tiny bag. But you know what, when you look at what's in the basket right now, should we just check this out for 52.47? The grow bag, all of the Pinks, 12 of those. The Euphorbia, and we've got two of those. We've got now two of the premium Oleander bushes as well. All of that. Delivered for 52.47, incredible. Let's talk about the oleander though, because incidentally, though, Sean, that that order there would be a perfect order because all of those three plants love sun, the same position. Yeah, they all love yes. full sun. They all love incre incredible drainage. They're yeah. All, so if you ordered those three and you've got a hot, dry, sunny area with quite poor soils, they'd all go together brilliantly. Yeah. So that was Stuart, our head of technical, put that together, but he has learned quite a bit about gardening recently. So he's, uh, he's put his uh, basket together. Right, these are absolutely amazing oleanders. And I'll, I'll just start, start by saying, I, I have worked with you, Garden, for about 20 years. Adam's worked for, for pretty much that time as well. Mm, yeah. Um, he's, he's disappeared now and again to do his other parts of his career. But we've had <coughs> oleanders for, for many of those years. But I can honestly say, the quality of our current stock is absolutely outstanding. And the reason being, we now work with what we believe to be the top breeder of oleanders in the world in Sicily. It's a family business that go back generations and they've actually got a wait list for clients. And it took us about two years to actually formally get in with them because they are very, very choosy. So we are working with the best breeders that we believe to be, when it comes to oleanders, in the world. The plants themselves, and when I say they've been really well bred, all of them on the nursery, and there are thousands of them, and I've walked around the nursery for many, uh, many weeks now, the last sort of like two, three weeks, all of them are really good in terms of shape, multi-stemmed. So they're not leggy, they're not thin and weedy looking, they all look magnificent, and many of them right now are bursting with buds about to go into flower. I mean, would you agree, as oleanders go, they're really, quite spectacular in terms of quality. They are, Sean, and um, I, I was going to ask you to pull one out of the pot. Let's go for it, Let's like, because I'll tell you what, you know, because there's quality on top. Right, let's have a little look. And the, the quality on top is, is so, so obvious because of the quality wow, yeah, there you in go. the pot. You know, when you've yeah. got a root system like that, and you've used the professional type of compost that growers are using in these parts of the world. This is why you get the result on top of the soil. God. These plants, like you say, they're compact, they're vigorous, they're, they've got leaves all the way down to the base. They've got that shiny evergreen foliage. They're hardy down to about minus five. They are just such brilliant, yeah. high and, quality plants. And I know, Adam, you love your Mediterranean plants, your chocolate plants. These are, this is a plant that you will find across the Mediterranean, Spain, France, Italy, uh, also in America as well. But what is wonderful, in their natural hotter environments, 
They survive on very little. Yeah, they do. I mean, they, they will grow pretty much on, in dust. You know, they, yeah. they really grow on very, very poor, awful soils. And quite often, well, you know, if, if you've been lucky enough to go down to um, Spain, the south of France and stuff, sometimes you see huge, great big stands of these down the middle of the motorways. Yeah. And they've kind of got traffic going past all day. All, they're, they're covered in dust and pollution. And it, it, it's blazing oh. hot. It's windy. Uh, and they just keep going. They love it. They almost seem to survive on, on abuse, yeah. you know, in a way. We, are, we actually, we, one of the, the lines often uses is they thrive on neglect, and they mm. do. So, um, one thing I will say is, I, it depends on where you live, I personally think they, they do best in pots, particularly if you're kind of the middle of the country towards the north, because they do need a bit of protection. If, it's, if the temperature gets less than minus five, they will need a bit of protection. So they might need a bit of flea. So if they're in a pot, you can easily move them to a warmer position against the wall of your house or in the shed, the, the greenhouse. But they are hardy to minus five, which is pretty tough, isn't it? it and, and to be honest, in the winter we've just had, oh, they fine, would have got through. I mean, where, yeah. I, where I live in Norfolk, I think the coldest we recorded was minus four this winter. Although you know, a couple of winters back, we did have a minus 11. So you know, it's not yeah. always reliable year on year. And if you do fleece them, just a quick tip there, don't just put one layer of fleece round go round multiple times a good 10 dozen yeah. or so times put a really thick layer of fleece round and then just tie it off on the top like the end of a christmas cracker now they want a really sunny spot again the sunnier the better super sunny sheltered uh, well drained soil if you put them in beds and borders but don't worry about the soil being um you know full of organic material no. and you know and don't even use our compost it's not often i say that don't even bother putting our compost into the soil with these Be because you know these really will grow on, on the poorest kind of yeah. soil they, they don't want a big heavy and soil full of nutrient they you know they'll do better on a poor soil and if you go away for a, a long holiday and there's not a single drop of water, these can actually really you know, really survive in drought for a good few weeks, can't they? Yeah, they, they do really, really Especially well. Especially once you're established. And in fact, Sean, what I've found with these is if you do put them in really rich soil, what you tend to get is lots, lots of, of leaves. leaves. Yeah. yeah, so they put on fabulous leaf growth, but they, they're really stingy with the flowers. Yeah. If you put them in poor soil, they kind of panic a bit and think, hold on a minute. The thing, I, suppose, I guess they, I need to reproduce. I need, I need yeah. To, yeah, so that you force them into flowering more. Like Agapanthus, for example, that, that's the same kind of yeah. uh, situation there um, just just quickly they are evergreen they're going to flower I, well I would say this year these are definitely going to be in flower once we get to May maybe a bit earlier because mm -hmm. these are yep. really quite ahead but I've had oleander flower even towards the end of October early November in the right sunny spot on a mild autumn. Well, my mum has had an oleander uh, shrub outside her back door in a, in a sunny corner for about five or six years. It's seven, eight foot tall now. Really? And it's already starting to flower now okay. and it's flowered reliable for years. So just quickly, we, we've already sold uh, thousands of our current stock here at U Garden. The price is amazing today. Two for 26.99, working at 13.50 each. Just a couple of things. Do not eat any part of the oleander and that applies to humans and pets. So do not eat any part of the oleander and that is for humans and pets. But um, they are spectacular, they really are. A little tip, pruning. I always, when a flower head's gone over, I just take off the yeah, the top exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, just pop a little pair of gloves, trim, yeah. the, uh, trim the flower yeah, head off the top. Yeah, you again, protect yourself from the sap. And yeah, and that's what you've got to do, yeah. really, Sean. And if you know these ones, these particular ones that are flowering now, uh, because it's so early in the year, if you dead them now, there's a good chance that a side shoot will come out with some more flowers. flower buds. Uh, do get them today. Absolutely amazing. Six eighty zero two seven. I tell you what, the, the, the centre of our potting shed is really fragrant. I mean, we've got so many gorgeous plants today. Look at that viburnum at the I top know. there. That's you know amazing. What? I just had a flashback to when we did the shows in the winter. And do you know what? We still managed to bring you quite a lot of lovely winter colour. Yeah, we did. But come on, this time of year. This is exciting, isn't it? It is exciting, Sean. Right. It's, it's all to play for now. And this is what we've lived for, isn't it? It's it what is. we've waited for. Listen, you've finally got through winter. We're finally getting some sun. <laughs> and this is the, the Cornilla coming up next. That has got a lovely fragrance. Doesn't that smell it? good? Yeah. That's awesome, isn't it? I mean, now, I fell in love with this when I when I first uh, saw it on the nursery about three or four weeks ago. But I've never grown one in my garden. 
I'm amazed at how vibrant this is. In, in the, you know, bear in mind we're April and this, this started to flower kind of end of March. Yeah, I mean, it's, and again, it's, but does it? If this one flowers for months, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this flowers for a long, long time. Uh, and and again, it, it's kind of likes very similar conditions to the dianthus, to the euphorbias, to the uh, oleanders. This originates from North Africa, sort of southern Europe, Mediterranean area. But I've seen them grown all over the UK. Uh, we've got one in our front garden that we've had for two or three years, and we've grown it up around a little obelisk. Actually, in oh, fact, really? you can actually probably grow one of these in a tower pot if you wanted to as well, because because um, they naturally look like they sprawl a bit. Yeah, yeah? They, they can be a bit wiry. So if you want it to to be a little bit tidier, say we planted one in a pot and then we put one of those metal obel obelisks That's over it, great and we've idea. let it grow up for the obelisk, and it's really great because it's got it's got to the top of the obelisk now, and, it, and it's just kind of sprawling out the edge of the obelisk a little bit, and it started flowering now, and it just flowered for month after month after month. But yeah, I mean this gorgeous sort of um, pea-like foliage on here. It's a member of the pea family. You can tell by the shape of the flower. And then that incredible fragrance there as well. That really is a super, super sweet fragrance. And when does yours normally flower? Adam? Well, as it started flowering now, it's already starting to flower. It's been starting to flower for about the last three or four weeks, and it will go pretty much all the way through the summer well, on and off. That's amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, Adam did mention that you, because they do naturally say a bit wiry, a bit sprawly. That can work really well if you've got a slightly more relaxed garden. But if you want it to be a little bit more controlled in terms of its appearance, a little bit more neat and tidy, a tower pot would be absolutely superb. And we are doing a really good offer on these today. One for £24.99, two for £39.98. So that makes them less than £20 each which is fantastic. I'd actually say if you, if you go for two tower pots, one more little item in your basket and you would get free delivery. So don't forget you will get uh, free delivery. So you can just get us a board. Oh, sorry, sure. There yeah, so we I go. just shoved it down there. Uh, on all orders over £40. So that's really important. If you can just nudge your basket over £40, you'll get free delivery on the lot. And with every single order today, you will get your free fantastic growing uh, bags but these are also great storage bags and great for shopping great for recycling tug of war tug of war yeah <laughs> great for tug of war. not recommended for tug of war but no, just don't... to prove the point of how tough these really are oh, they really yeah are. They, 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 yeah they tough yeah those handles aren't coming off are they they're not, not, they're not, not anytime soon that's for sure <laughs> But uh, yeah, loads of reasons to order today. Some amazing deals on the Uganda. Thank you to everyone that's watching. We've got, we've got loads of orders coming in today. But it's great to have your company. It really is. Yeah, it's Lovely. nice, isn't it, Sean? It's, you know, it's, this is what's so great about what we're doing at Ugarden. You know, just interacting with everybody, sharing great. your pictures, sharing your emails, answering your questions, sharing our passion. Yeah. Brilliant. What could be nicer? I can honestly say I've never been... Well, I've not been this happy in my work for, for years, actually. You're not saying, I know, I mean, rather obviously we both do other things as well, but you love being here, don't you? Adam? Yeah, but, but you know, when is it, you know, you get a chance in life to, to share what really excites you with so many other people, yeah. you know, on, yeah. a, on a weekly basis. It's and amazing, isn't it? We've all got the same mindset. We all love plants, we love gardens, we love being outside, we love nature, we want to grow our own food. Yeah, God, yeah. It's, it's fabulous. And And... To share our passion with, with you, and you share your passion as well. So many of you, you, you're sending your pictures, you're sending your messages, you chat amongst each other. It is wonderful, it really is. Right, we're going to move on to our Exacorda next. Um, I cannot believe I've never had one of these in my garden. Why haven't I had one, Adam? What would, it, what it, would put it, me off? It, it does surprise me because, again, it's one of those shrubs that over the years um, I've seen so, so many of my customers uh, uh, have bought this kind of shrub. You know, the um, like there's the other thing, like that pink willow that uh, people have been growing for years, that's those lovely sort of pink willow yeah. leaves. That's a super popular plant. This is a super popular plant. And again, so, so easy to grow. This isn't really fussy about whatever soil it's in. It, it will grow in a sunny position. It will grow in dappled shade. It will grow and semi-shade it's bone hardy it will come back year after year it's got a very open loose kind of lax habit to it it doesn't need supporting or staking it flowers for weeks on end and then the rest of the summer it has these lovely kind of arching branches with these gorgeous oval leaves that Stunning. look lovely all the year through it's magnificent it's a really really gorgeous plant i think it's got a an elegance to it as well because i, I mean white soils are beautiful in the garden but to me it's like a I'd call it a vintage white. Yeah, 
It, it is, you know, as you say, an absolutely stunning white. And what really um, kind of sets it aside for me is that lovely limey green centre you get in the flowers as well. That's yeah. just so, so nice to get that little sort of dark pop of green in the middle there. That's I mean, just stunning. It is really, really stunning. And, and a great price today. That's been one of the top sellers actually over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's $17.99 if you are a club member. And if you're not a club member, if you've got an order that you're putting together right now, don't forget for five pounds a year, you can become a discount club member and get 10% off all your plants today, which is amazing, isn't it? It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, this is what we call a good doer in the trade. It, and it is, it's a good doer, that extra hoarder. I don't know what I said, I don't know why I've ever, I, I, why have I never had that in my garden? I you, don't honestly, Sean, you plunk it in, you leave it, it barely needs any pruning. Occasionally, I mean, for the first two or three years, I wouldn't prune it at all. Thereafter, uh, every year, you could just take out a few wiry stems, you know, if there's a few stems that yeah. are crisscrossing or but a little bit damaged. Easy, easy. But other than that, just leave it and enjoy Brilliant. it. It only gets about as tall as Sean and I as well, so it's not going to be yeah. some huge, great big shrub either. And that, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, hang Eight on. foot's too much. Yeah, we're too, too but no, we're, we're, we're probably, we're not the same height we are, aren't we? You're slightly taller than me, I think. Am I? I'm, I'm, about, I'm about sort of six foot. Foot, no, six foot, five foot nine oh, and a I'm half. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm five ten. There you go. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. 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 I think you're slightly kind of. Yeah. But, do you know we are actually that is the average height in the UK. You'd be pleased, don't Adam. We, we'd be we'd be taller on the moon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we would. I'm happy with my height. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, care. yeah. 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 What's the matter? Oh yeah. Oh, oh mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. And there's not a lot we can do about it. Although I do keep getting adverts on my. Um, my social media feed offering me some trainers with a lift in them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll get in stair lift ones now and stuff like that coming through the door. Stair lifts, oh, um, and I know, I know walking you know. baths as well. Yeah. Oh, I've had that one. Yeah, so yeah. How, how very dare you? Yeah. Straight in the bin they go, recycling. Oh. Yeah. And then you struggle to get in and you think, oh, actually. <laughs> Do you know that? Jokes about it's nice. That and that, maybe my mum's elderly now. She's 18. It's, it's so nice that there's so many... that we, we, we have a bit more knowledge about everything now with the internet, don't we? So if you do need anything, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. I, those walking baths, I don't know how the water stays in when you open the door. No, you, no, you have to sit with you. know what happens. <laughs> do you use very stiff water so it doesn't run out? I just wonder, can you open the door and... No, you, you presumably the door won't open until you empty it. Oh, I hope not. I could just see my mum, that's all. Just, uh... <laughs> anyway, let's talk about plants. It's far more fun. Uh, so, we, we've we just had confirmation that we have got uh, the Euphorbia collection ready to go right now. Um, and this is based on your feedback. So, over the past couple of weeks, you've seen the Miner's Merlot euphorbia if you're regular that is uh, and that's this lovely kind of bronzy leafed one we showed you the black pearl today but uh, but a lot of you said well i don't want to buy three of the miners merlot two of the black pearl could we do a little a little selection where you get one of each and we have got that available right now because these two look made to be together don't they? look at the contrast sean there yeah. I mean, yeah, so that... you get that one and you get that one basically you get one of each there which is fantastic to see that foliage you know those that two different types of foliage contrasting together is, oh is, they, they're made for each other it, aren't they it's just magnificent i mean each one is kind of trying to outdo the other there aren't they you with these which looks fabulous and even the flowers i mean you know the miners merlot is about to come into flower and even even the flowers will contrast each other as well. So I definitely think you've got to plant these. Um, in fact, well, what I would do actually, I would probably get three lots of these and I'd plant a clump of three of the Miner's Merlot, a clump of three of the Black Pearl. Um, and yeah, and just, just go for that wonderful yeah. contrast. They just look incredible, don't they? And so, remember the Euphorbia, they are so easy to grow. They, they, they'll pretty much survive anywhere, as you said earlier. The only thing they don't like is like really really heavy wet cold yeah, soil yeah or deep shade other than that you know but semi shade's fine semi shade's yeah. fine yeah um, but yeah heavy wet soils they will absolutely hate you for that and they will just they will just rot away and die but going to the other end of the scale you might have somewhere in your garden that is silly dry um, and really poor soil you, you, I don't know perhaps for instance you've moved into a new house and you've got that part of the garden where the kind of the, the, the diggers and stuff used to be down the end and you oh, go to dig and, and it's yeah. full of stones and gravel and bits of brick and stuff and you're thinking oh for goodness sake what's going to grow in this these will grow in this they'll love that super stony gravelly well-drained soil you might have sandy soil like i've got in norfolk that dries out really quick and is not very high in nutrients you might um 
I live in the part of the country where you've got a lot of slate uh, in the soil or um, a lot of limestone or something like that. They will grow in all these areas as long as it's sunny and well drained. These don't need rich soil. They are tough, tough plants. And in terms of um, foliage, you get that lovely foliage all year round. I mean, I'll be honest, in the, in the coldest parts of winter, the odd bit sometimes goes a bit... I'll use your word, manky. Yeah. yeah. In, I mean, in, in the really cold... In really extreme winters, yeah. yeah. Um, but really easy to reshape and prune. We always say just wear gloves with you four because they, the, the sap could, could cause a, a irritation to your hands. But, I, but generally speaking, we always prune after they've flowered as well. Yeah, you trim them off after they've flowered. Uh, and sometimes they'll send out little shoots and, um, and, and flower for you again. But yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant plants that give so much, but for such a minimum input. Yeah, so if you want to just go for one of each, then it's £12.98. pence. Postage is six ninety nine per order, don't forget. So don't think you're going to pay that every time. It's per order, but if you spend over £40, it's free. But if you want the um, these individually, maybe you've already got the Merlot, but now you're thinking, oh, I'd like the Black Pearl, then that is available individually, £9.99, or you can double up and go for two of those for £11.99. That's 561-235. Right, the, the most popular plant today and I'm so pleased we're so pleased is the petunia saphinia burgundy yellow picote I have to say that slow that as it goes um, but we both when we first saw these we just both went wow didn't we we walked in yeah because we well you can see all the picture I mean, cards look. we have and yesterday you know when we set all the picture cards up and we walked in and we saw this one it was like Oh yeah, my goodness we both me. took a moment and yeah, took it in. That's a standout. Yeah, I yeah. showed my other half last night and, and he said, oh, wow, yeah, that is... I, I yeah. showed Craig this morning who kind of helps us set up and um, he looked at it and said, that's a stunner. That's really beautiful. It's going to be one of those petunias that you grow this year and whoever visits your garden, whoever walks past, is going to ask you and say... What is yeah. that? Where did you get it from? How have you grown that? You know, and the, the answer to all of that is Safinia and 30 years worth of experience. Just incredible, Sean. I mean, you know, <laughs> we've had a few messages from people saying, "Oh, I don't tell it. I don't tell my friends that come and see look at my garden. Sometimes where I've gotten them from because I don't want them to copy." <laughs> Listen, doesn't matter. Whatever you want, but um, these will turn heads. They will start conversations. Um, I do like to. I do like to. If somebody like, like loves one of my plants, I do tell them where I got it from because I like to share that joy. But I can honestly say. I will be buying these today. I just don't don't know how many I'm going to buy, but I think I'm going to do four hanging baskets just in these because I think they're going to look magnificent. But I liked your idea because, Adam, you said you might just throw in a bit of purple as well. Yeah, I just thought I might, I might just get sort of... If I did a hanging basket, say an 18-inch hanging basket, and I had, say, six of these in an 18-inch hanging basket, I might just put three purple um, saphinias in as well yeah. and just have that little yeah. odd pop of purple. I'd just go for a solid purple just coming between those picotay flowers. But, again, it's totally up to you. That That's something I'd like to do. Yeah. You might just want just have them on their own. And just very quickly, when you get these home, they'll arrive in greenhouses, in cardboard boxes. All of our packaging is 100% recyclable. Give them a good drink, pot them up. You need to grow them on for the next few weeks or so, and then put them in your, your hanging baskets, your containers, when there's no risk of frost. But they are absolutely stunning. Every year, there's one or two things that that sell out far quicker than we kind of plan, and they are really going quickly. And you've got to bear in mind, it, it isn't just the orders coming in on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the shows, but so many orders go through on the website as well. Oh, I need to drink. Go have a drink, Sean. Yeah, I mean, as you oh, say. Here we go. It is only uh, flavoured water, by the way. Flavoured mm. with what, though? Uh, it's a touch of fruit. Oh, lovely. Summer fruit, touch, summer fruit. A touch of fruit. There's no honeyberry in here, I don't think. They've put one strawberry in about 10,000 litres of water, you mean? <laughs> Apparently it's natural flavours. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the brand... Don't, 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 hey, don't. Just right, so uh, about yes, it, so. if you do want to go for those petunia veneers, absolutely amazing, outstanding, beautiful, and will turn heads in your garden. 401 triple five for those uh, Petunia, Saphinia, Burgundy, Yellow, Picote. Not easy to say. That's what I'm letting you say. I'm just, keep, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just keeping quiet. I'm not saying the name. It's a long description. Right, Geranium Storm Cloud is next. 
And these, I mean, I just fell in love with these because you've got the colour of that foliage, really rich and dark, and then you've got the stunning bluey purple flowers as well. And these are so easy to grow again, Adam. Really easy to grow, hardy, reliable. These will come up year after year after year. They need very minimum input. They'll grow in dappled shade. They'll grow uh, in, you know, in full sun. Actually, I noticed on a couple of plants we've got here in the uh, potting shed, they've already got some stalks on, some flower yeah. stalks as well. So there's, there's a good chance, a you know, really good chance that yours will flower this year, definitely. And over the next two or three years, the clump will become more established. You'll get more and more flowers. Um, just really easy to grow as well. Not, not a demanding plant by any means. They'll grow in quite dry soils, they'll grow in damp soils. The only, again, the only thing they won't really like is good. really, really wet soils. But yeah, I mean, just just the leaves, the leaves on their own are really, really attractive. Yeah, if you see, I mean, when you see those against my yellow shirt. It's a nice contrast there, it's isn't it? It's a lovely colour, isn't it? So we were saying, just as a foliage plant, uh, that is going to look really attractive. But the point is, you're actually going to get loads of those gorgeous flowers all summer long. They'll die down during the winter, but come back year after year. And you might have a big area of gravel. You might have graveled an area in your garden, and um, you know, you, you're getting a bit bored with that gravel. It might be Cotswold stone or white gravel. Imagine planting these in that gravel and then getting that amazing contrast. That would oh, look brilliant, wouldn't stunning. it? Stunning. Now, also really popular today is our Dianthus collection. 12 of these really, really well-established plugs, six varieties, two of each. And if you've got a sunny area in your garden, I, I'm going to say you need these, don't you? You, you really do. do. And if you've got awful soil, if you, <laughs> you know, honestly, sometimes I go to some people's gardens and they despair because their soil is so, it hasn't got any heart to it. You know, it's mm. just gravelly. It's, it's, it's really uh, super well drained. It's stony. It's, it's chalky. It's, um, you know, it might be a seaside sort of position and everything else struggles. Pinks will be brilliant for those kind of situations. They love false sun they do well in really kind of poor soils um, they're super drought tolerant once they're established they they're evergreen so you get that what they call that glaucousy blue foliage all the way through the winter they eventually form some little carpets or little mats about the size of a breadboard each one eventually kind of they sort of spread out sideways but more in a round way rather than rectangular um, and then you get those masses and masses of flowers every year and we're sending out these six different varieties so you're going to get six wonderful different colors some of the um, plants are a solid colour, some are bicoloured, some have got slightly fringed petals, some have got the smoothed edge petals, but all of them will have the most amazing, beguiling, gorgeous, spicy fragrances as well. Uh, and quality there, again, Girl. amazing quality, Sean, of those. Just remember, when you take them out the packet, though, um, make sure you know which one is which. Don't just yeah. take them out all straight away because they're labelled individually so you know exactly which so, one is which. So just to quickly explain that, I think I've got... Um, yeah, there you go, that's the packaging. So they'll all be labelled on here. So you get A all the way through to F and actually sometimes right the way through to, to, to G there, you can see there. So, and L actually, yeah, sorry, G all the way through to L and then You've got all the letters along there. Yeah, 12. My math isn't quite as good today as it normally is, but there you go. So you've got all the, uh, the system there, so you know exactly which varieties are which. I mean, you might just be not care and just mix them all up, but you have got the, the choice of really, really planning your beds and borders. Now, also, just quickly, uh, they're really uh, going re incredibly fast, actually, down with us. But we've also got the Busy Lizzies, which are such a great summer bedding plant, aren't they? Well, they're the opposite they really scale are. to the pinks, aren't they, Rich? We're talking about yeah. the pinks just now wanting full sun, really, really dry areas. Uh, but busy lizzies are great for the opposite. Gra uh, busy lizzies are great for really damp places, for dark places, for cool places, for shady places, for sort of filling gaps between all your other plants in the garden. And, and the great thing about them is, um, I think you were saying even the other day, Sean, that you underplanted a Sambucus with these. I did. Uh, and then um, you actually trimmed the branches the Sambucus away because they were getting a bit too vigorous and you didn't even know the busy lizard had survived under there but I, I couldn't even see them yeah and then when I cut back the branches like oh my word and they were they were getting the most minimum amount of light but they loved it yeah. they, they will do well yeah. in re so I've got a north facing border in my garden and I always use them I've grown some now and I always use them to plug those gaps um, I've grown mine from seed it's been an absolute labor of love I'm not sure I'll do it again I, you know yeah. honestly get the plugs so much sure. easier.
And it would be if you if you were thinking of growing them from seed now. It's a little bit late as well, isn't it? It is a little yeah. bit late. But yeah. all the work's been done for you. They've been meticulous grown. It's the beacon variety, which are really really disease resistant as well. Four hundred eight zero four at just nine pounds and ninety nine pence. Uh, do you know we've had a lovely show. We we are going to be with you about another twenty minutes. If you've got any questions, any comments then do message us YGV, YGTV at yougarden.com. But we would love to hear from you. But let's, uh, let's give you a quick recap of what's been really popular on today's show. It's been really busy, actually. Right, Oleanders, my word. You have got such a great deal today on these, and I really, truly mean that from my heart, because these are not just oleanders on a buy one get one free but they are premium quality oleanders these have been meticulously grown by what we believe to be the, the top breeder in the world in sicily and it's a family business they've even got a waiting list for clients and we actually put in advanced orders with them a long time ago these have been all brought across the uk and they are stunning. So an oleander is hardy to minus five. We always say that they they thrive and neglect, so they don't need they don't need a lot of love and care. They don't need a lot of watering. You can go away on a holiday, come back. They should still be absolutely fine. Hardy to minus five. So if you are someone that lives north or even the middle of the country and you experience temperatures a lot lower than that, grow them in pots and then just just protect them if you know it's going to be hard, you know minus six minus seven they also i have to say smell divine as well you've got a lovely fragrance to those flowers they are evergreen so you've got that foliage all year round and on a good summer in the right position we do say full sun full full sun on these but you can get them to flower for up to six months of the year and they just repeat flower again and again do don't forget you cannot eat oleanders and that's any part and that applies to humans and all pets as well then we've got the dootsie a lovely variety called raspberry sunday a lot more compact this one it's not massive in terms of its growth so ideal for a smaller garden and great for containers and pots as well and that is down from 19.99 to just 11 pounds and 99 pence now the best value plugs that we do are called the pro plugs you get 60 of these and they've been so well grown already they've been multi-seeded and what you've got is a variety of colors so purples blues light blues whites and i'm sure you all know to lobelia this trailing variety it just trails and trails and flowers and flowers you never have to deadhead lobelia as well it just takes care of itself likes a sunny position I want to say the sunnier the better. I mean, I have, I've put it in part shade, but it tends to go a little bit leggy. Would you agree, Adam Lobelia? Full sun for me. Yeah, it does it, like a nice sunny position, Sean. To be honest, to say it will go in shade, but it's, you it, tend to see a little bit more foliage and a, you know, a few less flowers. Yeah, and a little bit leggy perhaps. So the sunnier the better with Lobelia. 490, 309, 60 plug plants. You just need growing on a little bit, but they work out 20 pence a plant. Now you've also absolutely adored the Dianthus. Remember, 12 plugs, six varieties, two of each. And this gives you such a great variety of color. And what I can generally say is Dianthus flower for months and months. They come back every year. They are evergreen. They love full sun, but they will survive in really quite poor conditions as well. 480, 687. And then the absolute star of the show today has been the Petunia Safinia Burgundy Yellow Picote. I managed to get it right that time. And uh, these are just stunning Petunias. They are the Safinia breed. I say it's for new breed, brand I should really say. And if you've ever bought Safinias before, you'll know that they repeat flower, they trail beautifully, they're so resistant, and these are stunning. And personally speaking, I'm gonna I'm thinking of buying 
24 plants actually in total, I'm going to quadruple. I'm thinking of just doing four hanging baskets all with these because I think that would look really, really quite dramatic and quite striking. So they have a double up deal, so they're 9.99 for six, but for an extra five pounds, you can double up as well. Four, zero, one, triple five. Is your item for that? Um, what a show we've had, Adam. I think it's an amazing selection today, isn't it? It's only going to get more intentional, isn't it, in the coming weeks because you know, with the amount of plants that are coming into bloom these days. Yeah. In fact, I, I don't even know how we're going to uh, make the choices in a few weeks' time because we, we, we go from the sublime to the ridiculous, and we generally, oh, yeah. every time, we, we struggle to perhaps look for something with a bit of colour, and now we're just spoiled like, for choice. Wow. Talking of which. I could pretty much buy everything on the show today. I wonder who's placed the biggest order today, actually. Fact, yeah. We have some bigger. I haven't placed <laughs> it yet. In your mind. In my mind, it's like massive. It is. I, including these, actually, because. My mum's been saying for the last year or so, she's been saying, um, oh, I'd love a lilac tree, but I don't think her garden's quite big enough for full-size lilacs, some of the other varieties, but this is perfect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is brilliant, because the, you know, the normal lilacs that are flowering now, Syringa vulgaris, they grow into almost small trees when they mature, and they're flowering now, but they'll only flower for two or three weeks, and then, then that's it, then, then they're kind of over. Um, this is a different type of lilac. This is a Korean lilac. This is the microphylla type, and this has got a much more open flower yeah. head, but it flowers oh. now, like massively. You can see on the plants we've got in front Gorgeous. of us. It will keep flowering through the summer, and then later in the season, it has another burst of flowers later in the year. It's so easy to grow. It's not fussed about soil particularly. It will grow in full sun. It will grow sort of in uh, semi-shade. Um, it, it's easy to look after it and it gets to about sort of the height of Sean and I. So, you know... Good 510. Yeah, good 510. Yeah. Um, it's a long-lived plant. The, the, the bees love it. It's super, super fragrant. And in the autumn, it turns the most magnificent butter yellow colour, all the leaves, before they drop off. Yeah. So that's so, I sometimes forget that, but you're right. They're yeah. lovely leaves. It's exactly. really lovely in the autumn. Look, look, the colour of your shirt almost, Sean, in the it autumn. It smells gorgeous. Yeah, and when you kind of just look, <clears throat> look into that, when you, when you sort of look into the flower heads like that and you, you just see, you know, how wonderful all those... Look at that. Yeah, I mean, it means it's hundreds, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. I mean, that's oh. just absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Wow, stunning. And so much more flower just to come there as well as time goes by. And, and of course, remember, unlike the, the sort of the lilacs you've got at the moment with those conical flower heads, they are magnificent, they smell good. But by the end of April, it's gone. they're gone. Yeah. These, you can enjoy the, the colour and the fragrance all the way through the summer into the autumn. God. So just like a boomerang, they come back again and again. And you get two for 99 cents. Amazing value on those, actually. Absolutely incredible value. But uh, you do need to put two in your basket and you do need to use that code today. YGTV1524. Right. There's a few more favourites that we just need to uh, show one last time, including our Helemium April Sun. Now, this one is... Uh, I'll tell you what, I think, I'll be honest, it's the only one on the show that I didn't really know, um, but I fall in love with it. Look at that. So, Adam, fully winter hardy. That's yep, what surprised yep, me. Yep, lifetime we, guarantee. Yeah, we give it a lifetime guarantee. In fact, I'm just going to leave it if it will stay there like that at that angle because you can see the flowers wow. much more nicely there. Um, yeah, again, this is a great shrub for a problem area. If you've got, and like some of the shrubs we bought you today and other plants, if you've got awful soil, if you've got a hot, hot, dry position, if you've got a soil that's stony, sandy, gravelly, slaty soil, you know, and, and you've tried other things and they've just not survived because they're getting baked in that really hot sunny position this will love it if if you think of yeah bring it on that's what this plant will say if you oh. think of the places for instance where lavender does so well well if you've been to the lavender fields up in Norfolk they're right out in that huge open sun they're on that really super well-drained sandy sort of poor soil they're near the coast they're getting those winds and stuff same sort of position this Halimim will like as well it loves that kind of position don't make it compete with other plants. If you're gonna, if you're gonna enjoy it, keep it somewhere where it's getting the ultra amount of sun, where you know it's not having to fight for space or sun or light with other plants. I mean, I think a pot is perfect. Fantastic for a pot. Yeah. yeah, grow it in a pot if you want to as well. Uh, if you've got a balcony three floors up and it's full sun, and other things are getting baked to death and drying out really, really quick, 
this is going to be a great plant. It's evergreen as well, so it looks good all year through. At the end of the year, or in the spring, you can give it a little clip over if you want before more foliage comes back and flowers again. So yeah, amazing. A, just a really great shrub. Yeah. I love that. That's another one on my list, that very long list today. 510-840-1499. Uh, now these have really caught my eyes. Well, there's so much to choose from today. See, my trouble is, I've got a big garden as well. I've still got I've still got lots of uh, gaps. So loads of uh, plants today, but also there's been a massive amount of interest on the hydrangea. Adam. Well, it's not surprising because you know, sometimes you think about the hydrangea and you think about the fact that we bring you hydrangeas where the flower color changes. But look at this one. I mean, this has got the most magnificent foliage. It's got those salmon colors, those pink colors, those green colors, those creamy colors. Look at the picture there. I, I mean, know. goodness me, even without the flower on it, it looks magnificent, but then as the foliage foliage starts to mature, it calms down a bit. And it sort of, you know, it comes to this point where it's got that lovely kind of um, creamy edge to the leaf. And then you've got this lovely flower on top, which is a pinky color. But I tell you, you can do with this if you want to. You could put this in acid soil or ericaceous compost, and those flowers will go from pink to bluey purple. Wow. So you can change the flower color. Um, hydrangeas work really, really well in quite uh, cool, dampish areas as well. So you could plant with things like hostas and ferns and um, sort of plants like I've that if you mine, want to. I've got mine with my stilbies and they oh, seem to work well. lovely with the stilbies, yeah, because yeah, the stilbies, uh, they, they, they won't tolerate being dry at all. No, so this... Um, but yeah, so, but you know, th this hydrangea is compact as well, only about sort of uh, 60 centimetres to a metre tall. So you could grow it in a pot if you want to. It's not going to be one of those huge, massive hydrangeas. Just don't do anything with it for the first two or three years. Just let it grow, let it flourish. And then from there on, in the spring, just take out about one third of the old woody stems, let the air back in, oh. let the new shoots grow um, up and just enjoy it. Right, incredibly busy today. Loads of orders coming through. Don't forget, if you've got a basket, get it to over 40 pounds, you'll get free postage. And the free gift is brilliant today. It is that grow bag, which is great for growing in, but also great for shopping. And they're worth 4.99. So thank you so much. It's been a wonderful show. We've got only got about five minutes left. Right, what else have we got time to see? What do you reckon? Uh, See, the dissenter, this is what really caught my eye. And actually, Adam, it was what you said that suddenly, you know, sometimes you just listen to, to something and think, actually, that makes sense. This time of year, a lot of perennials are just beginning to show mm. and a lot of bulbs are, are dying down and they're done. So there's that gap. This is a brilliant perennial, you're saying, to fill that gap. It is, yeah. And the good thing about this perennial as well, it will fill a gap now and it will look its most magnificent now. But it does this kind of thing by sort of uh, May, end of June time, it actually starts to die down and go yellow and kind of disappear, which ordinarily you think, oh no, that's no good because I'm going to have a gap all summer long after that. There'd be nothing there. But of course, if you plant this between your other herbaceous perennials that flower later in the year, by then they will take yeah. over the space. So what you've done in effect with this Dicentra, you have doubled the flower season in that herbaceous board and you haven't had to wait for three or four months with nothing yeah. because these have plugged the gap in the interim. I've got a board right now and it just looks miserable. Mm. Um, it, it looks amazing in summer, but it looks miserable now. So you write a few of these in that, in that will just lift it at this time Give of that year. bit of interest, won't it, Sean? That's Between yeah, yeah. now and when those other perennials really come to the fore. So to get the triple up deal, you need to physically put three of 560787 in your basket. So there we go. We've got one there. So don't order that. You've got to physically put three of the same item in there. Three, and then there you go. Put the code in, so three's in your basket, there you go. And the oleander, put the code in, and suddenly we've got a price of 433. And that code, don't forget that code, unlocks all the promotions. So with the oleander, we get a free one, and we get a free garden tidy grow bag. And we get free delivery as well, because we've put the code in and we've gone over 40 pounds. We really, and we really do try on uh, YGTV, you Garden TV, just to, to give you as many kind of little tips in terms of saving money and obviously masses of tips in terms of, of the plants and your garden as well. Just quickly as well, the oleanders, 
These are buy one, get one free. For club members, they're working out £26.99, which is incredible. Uh, they are beautiful specimens. They're premium quality. Evergreen, reliable, hardy to minus five. So great, actually, in most parts of the UK. And if you... Um, do live somewhere a little bit colder, just grow them in pots and just give them that extra bit of protection over the winter months. But oleanders, we always say thrive and neglect, they're not fussy things they're at all. They're not fussy either. And I tell you what, if you can't afford that Mediterranean holiday this year, we'll bring the Mediterranean to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Put it in your garden, because that's what they'll do. They'll yeah. give you that Mediterranean feel, they'll give you that tropical feel, they'll give you that feel of something different and unusual and exotic and exclusive and different. Yeah, Brilliant so right. shrubs, really, really and, lovely. And on our website, it's, uh, £55 for two, but again, put one in your basket, use the code, and you'll get two for £29 and £97. Don't forget, do not eat your oleanders, and that applies to humans and all pets as well. Now, I know sometimes you've got a basket open and it's really annoying when it's kind of like £38, say, and you're paying six ninety nine postage. So the most affordable item that we've got on the show are these gorgeous pots. And actually, <laughs> there you, go. Uh, you get, uh, it's a buy one, get two free, and it's the Torino planter in the light copper for three ninety nine. but you, so it's buy one, get two free. And these are lovely pots. We were saying, they're just We're, practical. They're they a practical are. size. You so, know. so easy to fill, easy yeah. to plant. Um, a lady was saying earlier on that um, she's put her um, primroses yeah, in there. So primroses are looking good now, but of course in another month's time, those primroses won't look so good. But the great thing about that is you can just park that pot with the primrose on the back of the shed Absolutely. for the rest of the year and put it out of the way. Do you know, I'll be honest, I grew crocus in mine. And the crocus did absolutely rubbish because it was uh, really wet and they just went to mush. They never got time to come out, did no, they? No, it was, it was a bad year for crocuses. But you know what? I've just shoved the pots around by the side of the greenhouse because I'm going to let them die down and they'll come back. Mm. But it's so easy to replant these and to move them around. And they're buy one, get two free at £3.99. Amazing. So that's just a little idea to get you over the line. If your basket say £38, add these. Takes over forty pounds, and you'll save six ninety nine on your postage. Compost, don't forget, it is our best seller. You get two big bags of our premium facial compost for just twenty four pounds and ninety eight pence. The club price is twenty two forty eight, and that is one hundred one two five. Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you. As it's been my pleasure as well, Sean. It's, it's mutual. I can assure you. But do you know what's nice? I always learn from Adam, he, he, we all do. And hopefully you've picked up a few little hints and tips and some great gardening advice. And most of all, you've bought some great plants from your garden today. So I'm back this Sunday, Adam's got the day off. So it's probably, are you in your garden or are you going away? Uh, uh, no, I'm going away. It's my sister-in-law's 50th birthday. So yeah, know. so we've got a family weekend away. So you have a, a fabulous time. Looking forward to it. So I will be back with Bex this Sunday. We're live from uh, 10 till midday this Sunday. Just to let you know, so it's a two hour special, 10 till midday this Sunday, live from the Pot and Shed. Keep ordering after the hour. Do use that discount code, which is YGTV1524, and make sure you definitely get hold of your Dianthus. From myself, uh, Sean, Adam, Stu, who you don't see, but is brilliant, is behind that wall there. He's pressed all the buttons today, he's done everything, bless him. And from Craig that you don't see as well, Craig gets all of our plants ready for the show. He does, He's yeah. very camera shy, is Craig. <laughs> he's, he's only a young lad, bless him. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thanks for all the lovely comments as well. So we'll see you live on Sunday, 10 o'clock. Keep ordering after the show. This is wonderful Adam Wolcott. I'm Sean Ryan. Happy gardening to all of you, you gardeners out there. Take care.